My fellow Americans, we embarked on a mission to make America great again for all Americans. As I conclude my term as the 45th President of the United States, we did what we came here to do. Well, it's about time. Please don't lose that respect. The world respects us again. Please don't lose that respect. Make America great again. Respect. Respect. Please don't lose that respect. The movement we started is just beginning. To serve as your president has been an honor beyond description. I had not spent my career as a politician, and perhaps most importantly of all, thousands of people came out with their families. I knew that they did not just come out for me. It deeply moved me. They came out to show me their support and love for me. I did not seek the easiest course. I did not. I did not. We did what we came here to do. To do. Please don't lose that respect. The world respects us again. Please don't lose that respect. Make America great again. Respect. Respect. Please don't lose that respect. The movement we started is just beginning. So I left behind my former life and stepped into a very difficult arena. Now, as I leave the White House, we must never forsake our belief in America. I fought for you, I fought for your family, I fought for our country. Above all, I fought for America, strong, proud, and free. We extend our best wishes, and we also want them to have luck. A very important word. Please don't lose that respect. The world respects us again. Please don't lose that respect. Make America great again. Respect. Respect. Please don't lose that respect. The movement we started is just beginning. What the fuck? Make sure I understand you correctly. So you said you're, you're alleging that you heard or that you witnessed uh, ballots being put in the machine, run through, counted, and then put through it again. That follow back is off by over a hundred thousand. That follow back, what do you guys do? Take it and do something crazy to it. Why don't you look at the registered voters? Zero, zero, there's zero. Why don't you look at the registered voters? Zero, zero. They were just rescanning, 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 counting votes nine to ten times. Running these ballots through countless times, countless times. Wait, what about what about how what, what about about the turnout rate? One hundred and twenty percent. There was illegal activity going on there. What you said today is the truth. I wrote a written affidavit. What you said today is the truth. Yes, it is one hundred percent true. I know what I saw, and I signed something saying that if I'm wrong, I can go to prison. Did you? That poll <laughs> book was offside over a hundred thousand. That poll book. What you guys do? Take it and do something. you want to work the election these democrats took every avenue possible to commit fraud in this election can you put a number to it countless times numerous times nine to ten times thousands of times at least thirty thousand over a hundred thousand what i saw was over 20 counts of fraud taking place in front of my face and this isn't counting you know the ballots that are found in rivers the ballots found under rocks the ballots uh you know the, the <laughs> that ball book is off by over a hundred thousand that ball I put I put this voters. mug. Zero, I'm glad zero, it didn't crash, zero. by the way. My John Doyle tear mug. I put this in the freezer overnight, and I put what Coke Zero in it, and it's so good. It's so chilled. <laughs> Welcome everyone. Welcome to another episode of Chud Watch. Today we're not going to be doing um. MAGA stuff. Today we're not even really going to be doing politics, although it might come up, who knows. Uh, today we're doing something a little bit different for Chud Watch, something we used to do more often actually back in the day prior to the, the, the election season that lasted about five times as long as it usually does this last year or so. Either way, uh, yeah, we're going to be doing MGTOW stuff, so it's going to be red pill type people, people who think they're alpha males, all that sort of stuff, so it'll be good. <laughs> Let me get to- Ooh, we're on a hype train. Thank you, everyone. 
Um, Baja, thank you for subscribing with Prime There's with a nine-month streak. Baja says, nine months of watching my beautiful girlfriend. I love you more than words can express, Hannah. Congrats on 10,000 subs on YouTube. So proud of you. Our sub baby is named Emmy. Okay, good to know. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I did get 10,000 subs on YouTube, by the way. Check it out. Ooh, 10,000 subscribers. We did it. Five digits. <laughs> So thank you everyone who subscribed to my YouTube channel. That's great. Um, let's see. There's actually, I have more subscribers on YouTube than I have followers on Twitch, which makes sense. YouTube's a bigger website, but it's just funny that like, this is where I do my work and then I just export it to YouTube where it gets more views. <laughs> Very strange. Um, by the way, if you're watching this later as a VOD on YouTube, thank you for being a YouTube watcher. Misunderstand, thank you for subscribing at tier one with a four month streak. Um, the Marusama with 20 bits, a bunny clean, cleanse for later. Rightio, thank you. Um, 0M80 with 100 bits. Hey, Hannah, got the first vaccine dose today along with my grandparents and my mom, dad, and sister got their second doses. Congratulations! Good job. Thank you for being responsible and getting that when you had the chance. Bumble Homestead with 100 bits. I need to stay off the neighborhood app. People are still arguing about masks in the Walmart. <laughs> oh, people are so trashy. What about the carbonation? Oh, the, the, the mug was in the freezer, but I didn't put the drink in it until right before we started. I just froze the mug so the mug would cool the liquid. I didn't just put it all in there. It would be a block of ice. Nick Snort, thank you for subscribing with Prime with an eight-month streak. Dr. Xanadu with 20 bits. Morning, Hannah. Morning, chat. Good morning. Um, <laughs> why don't you look at the registered voters? Zero, zero. There's zero. <laughs> um, Winter O'Hare, thank you for subscribing. Ooh, I need to put some music on or something. It feels very weird when it's like, <laughs> just me. That's better. Um, Spazzy Shinobi, thank you for gifting a sub. Uh, Thez7274473, thank you for subscribing with a six month streak. Ah, that capitalism. makes more sense. Good. Um, the two newest Bible studies aren't listed as TBR. Yeah, I gotta go fix those playlists. Baja was talking about that earlier too. Batty Bell, thank you for gifting a sub. Oh, this poll. Coke is gonna win. Coke is the world's most popular soft drink. <laughs> All you Pepsi people. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Chillbot55, thank you for subscribing. Dr. Xanadu with 20 bits. It's a damn shame that there's no Dr. Pepper in the poll. Dr. Pepper's not really a cola. It's its own thing. I actually don't know what you would designate Dr. Pepper as, but like... There are other Dr. Pepper-like drinks, like Mr. Pibb and, uh, uh, you know, d there's all sorts of Dr. Off-Brand sodas. I don't know what that's called. Dr. Xanadu with 20 bits. It's, uh, oh, no, party read that one. Sorry. Um, Boof DCM. Thank you for the thousand bits. Appreciate it. Daddy Sume with 20 bits. Um, holy shit, Baddie Bell, 336 gift subs. Hannah, we need a Baddie Bell emote. Has Baddie Bell gifted 336 gift subs lifetime? That's crazy. <laughs> We're at 68% of the level 3 hype train, by the way. Um, Fairly CC with 20 bits. Have you heard about Biden pushing to get Harriet Tubman on the $20 bill? It's like the most lib thing he could do when people are desperate for about 100 of those in their bank accounts. That was actually already a plan that um, Obama administration and the, the Fed had for a while that the Trump administration just stopped because I assume he didn't want a black person on money. <laughs> I'm, it's, it's not a new thing is my point, so I don't care. I think it's great that that's happening, but I agree that right now is not the time to, like, make a big deal out of it. Just do it, and we can talk about it then. But right now, people would need money. <laughs> Mr. Pibb is nothing like Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper is disgusting, unsubscribed. 
<laughs> okay, I guess I don't know my Mr. Piv. I'm sorry, I've never had Mr. Piv. I assumed it was Dr. Pepper-esque. <laughs> uh, cryptid Deity with 20 bits combined killed me today. Thanks for laugh. Com- Combine? Okay. Am I familiar with Postmodern Jukebox? I love Postmodern Jukebox. My whole, um, I have a playlist on my, uh, phone that's for my D&D character, uh, the professor, and it's full of Postmodern Jukebox. <laughs> What's my opinion on pineapple pizza? If you like it, that's fine, but I don't want it within a mile of mine. No, thank you. I don't want fruit on my pizza. <laughs> Unless it's a dessert pizza, I guess. But like a pizza pizza with like red sauce? No. And cheese? Uh-uh. I've had like, there used to be a pizza buffet near me that did, um, uh, uh, like fruit pizza. And it was, it wasn't like a, you know, it didn't have cheese on it or anything. It was just pizza crust, sweetened pizza crust with like fruit on it. And that's fine. But I don't like fruit on like normal pizza with cheese and stuff. Wing the ultimate nug with 20 bits. If you've ever had star fruit in your pizza, you're missing out, or never had, rather. That said, if you like it, right on. Archangel 135079 with 100 bits. We've got a bunch of dark berry Dr. Pepper for free, and let me tell you, it was completely meh. Don't buy it. <laughs> okay, good to know. I'm not a big Dr. Pepper person in the first place. I'll do it occasionally, but not a ton. <sighs> Sorry, I'm just getting a text. <laughs> Jet's Pizza is so expensive. I know. It's 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 so good, though. I love Jet's Pizza. I actually haven't had Jet's Pizza in, like, a, two years, maybe? I should get that sometime. It's delicious. I love their crust. It's so good. We're at 79% uh, of the level 3 hype train. With only 20 seconds left, we're cutting it real close, folks. MMO Addicted with 20 bits. I'm a bit pissed tonight. My mother got some bogus electricity bill claim as if she hasn't been paying her bills for the last four years, and they locked her bank account, except I've been paying her bills, and they just misfiled the transfer, despite them being clearly marked, and now apparently the only person authorized to fix it is on quarantine. Um, so F her, I suppose? I'm seriously about to ignore quarantine and go throw hands. <laughs> oh, jeez. I'm sorry, that sucks. Red tape and, and, and sort of uh, bureaucratic mishandling could be a pain. I'm sorry. I hope you can solve that quickly. We did level three. Good job, everyone. Hooray. Uh, Dr. Xanadu with 100 bits. I can't let the hype train die yet. We were just getting to the good Dr. Pepper talk. Uh, a label Saul with 100 bits. Hello, how's it going today? Good, thank you. And 789 with 100 bits. Uh, Dr. Xanadu with 200 bits. Rate you rambles with 40 bits. Hitting up this 12 hours on the road to do today. Thank you for being around. Of course, I hope my, um, I hope my voice, uh, even though I'm working on voice training, uh, gets you through your road trip all right. Drive safe. Um, what's my thoughts on Little Caesars? Little Caesars is the McDonald's of pizza. If I want... Like, like, if I want a cheap, easy cheeseburger, I can go to McDonald's. If I want a cheap pizza, I'll go to, I'll go to Little Caesars. But neither of them is good. I don't treat myself to McDonald's. I don't treat myself, to, you know what I mean? Like, if I want a good pizza, I'll at minimum get Pizza Hut or something. <laughs> I don't know. Little Caesars pizza tastes like cardboard. <laughs> but it's pizza, so, you know. Archangel13579, thank you for continuing your gift sub. Um, Pashua Hashua with 45 bits says hello, hello. Uh, Paladin's Fury with 100 bits. Hannah, if you have tomato sauce, you already have fruit on your pizza. God damn it, you know what I mean. 
<laughs> I don't want... Tomato is savory. I don't want sweet. <sighs> Intelligence is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing not to put it in a fruit salad, okay? MMO addicted with 20 bits. Oh, I solved it by paying four years worth of bills temporarily so her account gets unlocked and she can function, and now they will have to get me that money back. Still, put a considerable dent in my savings, as you can likely imagine. Effing paying four years worth of bills in a day. I bet. Oh. Sorry, I hope they get that solved and can reimburse you. Uh, Joe Sephiroth 13 with 100 bits. Didn't you and Jake discuss some sort of local pizza shop monstrosity? Maybe it had a hot dog in it? Yeah, someone, um, in our hometown, uh, you know, where we grew up, not where we live currently, um... I was, I was house-sitting for my parents years ago, so we were back in, like, my hometown, and there's a pizza shop there that's not really good. It's nostalgic for Jake and I, though, because it's the only pizza place in town, and they had a Coney Dog pizza. It had, like, pickles and Coney sauce and hot dogs. It was disgusting. It was awful. <laughs> Ghetto Kanye with 20 bits. Did you see Seth Rogen and Ted Cruz are fighting on Twitter? I saw that. Ted Cruz is getting killed by Seth Rogen. <laughs> what about mushrooms and veggies? That's fine. Like, I like spinach on pizza. I'm not a big mushroom fan, but, like, they don't... It's not a... If someone ordered a pizza and it had mushrooms on it, it's not a deal breaker for me. It's just not something I would pick for myself, but, like, if everyone else wants mushrooms, that's fine. Um, Migyu asks, question for Hannah, so how many PS4 controllers have you burned through from overusing them? I think two? Two or three? Ever? I've had a PlayStation 4 since they came out, though. I've had two of them. My initial PlayStation got replaced by a PlayStation Pro about a year and a half, two years ago. I don't know. I've probably gone through two or three controllers in that time. I have two currently that I switch between when I'm doing long sessions of gaming. Uh, Kirthin with 100 bits just finished up my last class of the day and now it's Hannah and sketching time. I hope your sketches go well. Um, we're at 30 seconds and 63% of the level 4 hype train. We're, we're very close. I believe in us. <laughs> Argonian Bum, thank you for subscribing with a six month streak. There's nothing funny about the tools of capitalism. Uh, Dr. Xanadu with 20 bits dessert pizza, pro or anti? I'm pro. I like dessert pizza. It's not my favorite thing, but, you know, if you're out at a pizza place, it's interesting. Ooh, we just, with eight seconds left, got the level four hype train. Nice. Artichokes on pizza? I've not had artichokes off of pizza, so I don't even know what they taste like. There's nothing funny about the tools of capitalism. <laughs> Baja says, mushrooms are the worst tasting thing to ever exist. I, have you had morel mushrooms? They're real good. <laughs> Morels are good. Crystal Cat, thank you for subscribing with an eight-month streak. Daddy Sume with 20 bits. I've burned through three sets of Switch Joy-Cons from Joy-Con Drift. Does that count? I bought third-party ones because the Joy-Con Drift was just terrible, and I don't trust Nintendo right now because of that. They're terrible. So I, I got a controller that for my Switch that's like, um, it's like the Pro Controller, but it's like in Joy-Cons and it can be attached to the, the Switch in portable mode. They're great. I have, I have hand, I don't, the Joy-Cons were already a little tiny for me, like it felt uncomfortable. I, I mean, it's a, it's a console aimed at, you know, kids, so I understand, that's fine. But like, I like that I was able to get the bigger controller that attaches to it, because I, I only play in handheld mode, basically. Uh, Netzerk 1987, thank you for subscribing with a two-month streak, says, love you, Hannah. I love all of you, too. Thank you. Um, Clava Faustna says, fiancé and me love your stream. You're on the only stream we were watched together. Started watching your content with the Jordan Peterson book. Oh, thanks. Uh, fun fact, Jordan Peterson's coming out with a new book in March, and we're gonna be doing that one, too. It's 12 More Rules for Life. <laughs> Thank you for subscribing, by the way. Uh, 20% of the level 5 with 3 minutes. 
Daddy Sume with 20 bits. I got my Joy-Cons repaired for free. They aren't charging for those repairs. I haven't had any problems since. Eh, I just, I, I, I don't want to take the time. <laughs> I already bought new controllers. So. MMO Addicted with 20 bits. One of my favorite pizzas is goat cheese, spinach, and caramelized onions. Ooh. <laughs> I'm happy for you, but that sounds disgusting to me. Okay, let's, uh, were there any follows I missed? Not yet. Um, so while we ride out the rest of this hype train, we have two minutes left and we're at 24% of level five. Let's go over kind of what I have picked out for this stream. Um, uh, Blackwing River says, thank you for being less ad hom prone than Jake. Oh, yeah, sure. We just do things differently. <laughs> People like his stream for his savageness and people like my stream for it being a little more chill i certainly get mad but i'd like to think i i just do things differently i don't know it's a personal preference thing um unconditional prong says i wonder if baja's dad knows about the commodore 64 mini i don't know i'm not i don't know what that is are they hold on Oh, are they making, like, a mini Commodore 64 thing you can plug into your TV? That's cool. That'd probably be a good gift for your dad, Baja. You can, like, plug it into your TV and it plays Commodore 64 games. He'd probably love that. Um... Jo Josephiroff13 with 20 bits. Peterson needs to release a full package deal called the Complete 24 Rules for Life with one bonus rule. <laughs> Jake also smuckles? What does smuckles mean? I don't know what that word means. Uh, Dr. Xanadu with 20 bits. The bonus rule is be born rich. <laughs> Your streams are also easier and cheaper to game? I don't even know what that means. Oh, Smug Chuckles? Okay. Uh, Earnfist, thanks for the 100 bits. 30 seconds left on the hype train at 29%. Uh, I mean, I laugh, though. I laugh, too, at things that I think are funny. I don't know. Uh, Dingo Subman, thanks for the 20 bits. Okay, level four hype train. Not too bad. Thanks everyone for the hype train. Appreciate it. Okay, so here's what I have today. I have Elliot Hulse. I have, it says, get married and make babies. I have, <laughs> this is a new video. This is from December 29th. I mean, it's a month old, but it's, it's too recent for this. Um, it says, Gillette exec shows us why men need to be controlled. This is a video on how the Gillette commercial has destroyed society. I'm not kidding. Remember that time Gillette made a commercial that's like, hey, don't be a dick. And Chuds lost their minds? So this is a video on how that destroyed society or something. MMO Addicted says, the extra secret bonus rule only available in the super exclusive 5000 edition. You already are a winner because you were probably born rich. <laughs> <sighs> um, Tate did an almost hour-long video on people criticizing him. Uh, so let we'll, we'll take that up. I guess I guess Leon Lush made a video about him or something. <laughs> so we'll take a look at that. Sandman says President Biden will make everyone a priority except white males. So we'll look at that. Sandman has a video. Uh, oh, we might do this one just because I find the title funny. It says, here comes the Hornado. <laughs> the Profane Priestess says, 
pizza, white sauce, grilled chicken, feta, spinach, bacon, and black olives. Pop it in the oven on a good pizza stone. Good stuff. Other than the olives, that sounds good. Yeah. Uh, Better Bachelor has a video on why men and women shouldn't be friends. We have a video on modern women versus trad wives. And yeah, I think that's it. I think that's what we got. So again, let me uh, thank all of you for getting me to 10,000 subs on YouTube. I appreciate that. So what do you guys think we should do first? It's too many options to do a poll. So you found a purple Soviet hat. Hold on. Oh my god. <laughs> now, I'm no tanky, but I do kind of like that hat. <laughs> Funny. Uh, MMO addicted with 20 bits. Also, I ordered a new commission of my snake enjoying a literal post-combat bloodbath. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Gillette, okay, everyone wants to see the Gillette video. We'll do the Gillette video. I'll, I'll add this to my, my list. <laughs> Maybe I'll get that someday. Also, Tanky Watch when? I know, I know we need to do the Tanky Watch soon. Um, MMO Addicted. Also, I ordered a new commission of my... Oh, I already read that one. Sorry. Okay. Let's do it. So, you guys remember the uh, account Mission. Mission, uh, a lot of you probably don't remember because this was, like, way back. This was when we first started Shudwatch, like, almost a year ago at this point. And I gained so many followers since then. I'm almost at 6,000 followers, uh, 10,000 on YouTube. Either way, this was a MGTOW channel we used to cover, but they stopped making content. But now, in the past month or so, they've started making content again. And they're um, tackling the most important issues that are facing us today. Like, remember that time Gillette made a commercial that said, stop being a dick? Anything but inspect this temple of capitalism. The Mightiest Quinn, thank you for raiding. Welcome, raiders. Go check out the Mightiest Quinn's channel. So, here he is talking about how that Gillette ad uh, destroyed society. So let's see how that went. Yeah, what's up, girl? How you doing? Okay, sorry. Hey guys, in this video we're talking about Carolyn Tasted from PNG, that is the executive responsible for approving the Gillette ad that has had massive social and cultural ramifications that are very, very destructive for the relations between men and women, and it's essentially the rejection of humanity itself. We're gonna talk about Do we need to do we need a refresher? Do people need to see the Gillette ad again so we can we can talk about it? We should probably do that just in case, because it has been a while. How do I spell Gillette? Gillette. Ad. <laughs> uh, it's like a minute and a half, so. Me too movement against sexual Toxic harassment. masculinity. Is this the best a man can get? Is it? We can't hide from it. Sexual harassment is taking over. It's been going on far too long. We can't laugh it off. Who's the daddy? <laughs> what I actually think she's trying to say. Making the same old excuses. Boys will be boys. Boys will be boys. Boys will be boys. But something boys. finally changed. Allegations regarding sexual assault and sexual harassment. Once, but she says he's a problem. And there will be no going back. Because we. We believe in the best in men. Men need to hold other men accountable. Smile, sweetie. Come on. To say the right thing. To act the right oh, way. Bro, not cool, not cool. Some already are. In ways big. Yo, men, 
and small. I am strong. I am strong. But some is not enough. So how we treat each other, okay? Okay. Because the boys watching today will be the men of tomorrow. Okay, so the idea is basically, hey, toxic masculinity is bad, don't be a dick. That's the entire thing, and on top of that, it's an ad for a razor company. It's your typical woke brand stuff, which, hey, at the end of the day, if, if a company's going to espouse any moral stance, I'm at least glad it's, like, a reasonable one. But at the end of the day, it's a commercial for a razor. Chuds lost their minds that a commercial dare tell them, don't be an asshole and sexually harass people. So we wound up with this which for some reason came out like a year or more after that ad. Hold on, when was when did the ad come out? Let's see. This ad came out January 2019th, 2019. So <laughs> we're, we're like two years on now, and this guy feels the need to talk about the impact that this has had on society. I don't think most people even remember this ad exists. It did not have a profound impact on the social structure of the United States. But I guess this guy thinks it did, so. About quantifying the damage that they've caused, also how and why this very hostile position towards men and masculinity is happening in Western societies, in addition to talking a little bit about who is responsible. So this is very, very important because if we don't- Again, the ad isn't anti-men, it's anti like toxic behavior. The ad explicitly set out to be like, we believe in like the strong positive aspects of masculinity, just don't use that masculinity as an excuse to be a dick. That's fine. <laughs> don't address this as men, it's going to get out of hand and get much, much worse. So you found part of the grassroots resistance response to all this that is happening on the internet with tens of millions of guys flooding into these communities trying to figure out how and why this is happening as well as come up with solutions. So please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to tell YouTube you're digging this content so we can get this message out to more guys and hopefully come up with some potential solutions. Also, please leave your criticism and just tear apart any of these ideas and let me know what you think in the comments. So with all that being said, let's jump in. So before I get going into this video, I wanted to establish culturally what has happened as fallout from the Gillette ad. And it's not just that ad, obviously. Okay, let, let, let's be clear. There's been no cultural fallout from an, a razor ad. It's a razor ad. And by the way, this razor ad is not the first piece of media to imply to people, hey, don't be a dick. It's fine. The ad is in response to cultural zeitgeist. It didn't create the cultural zeitgeist of you shouldn't be toxic with your, like, gender identity. It's fine. <laughs> Obviously, it's an overall culture that is becoming hostile towards men. But the Gillette ad in particular demonized masculinity in general and legitimized a lot of these extreme... No, it didn't. It did explicitly the opposite of that. It criticized toxicity and, and and said, you can do great things. You can, like, be th this wonderful person. Don't use your identity, your gender identity, as an excuse for toxicity. Like, be the best person you can be. Again, reminder, this is all wrapped up in a, in a razor ad in the first place. It doesn't matter. The message is good, but it's just silly that we're talking about this in this way anti-man narratives and the problem is on social media young people specifically on tiktok young women are dominating the narrative and what we're seeing them do is endorse all these ultra progressive viewpoints and consider them to be good so they actually are oh no not progress and women having a part in the narrative 
That's ridiculous! We all know that only men are allowed to be in charge of the narrative. As it has been for the past... Forever! <laughs> ...are now orienting the morality of our culture around this. So I've got two really good videos to establish that. One is from a YouTuber who approached a woman as a joke, and this is a typical response that we're seeing all over the place because Gillette normalized this as being... <laughs> Why do women not like it when I, I come up and harass them? It must be Gillette. Gillette! <laughs> or how about this? Society as a whole has made it socially acceptable to tell creeps to fuck off. Rightfully so. <laughs> a normal reaction to a guy trying to establish a romantic relationship. So take a look at this. Yeah, what's up, girl? How you doing? Okay, sorry. Okay, and the second clip I've got is a very popular clip. F that guy. Kind of How can you look at that and be like, oh, she's she's being unreasonable. Don't approach strangers on the street and expect them to be receptive to you hitting on them. Jesus Christ. Young people, their belief system that they're trying to enforce as far as Gen Z being the most progressive good generation of all time, this is what they think. So they're endorsing these ultra progressive anti-masculinity viewpoints and then regurgitating them as normal. So take a look at this video. There are really men out there who will turn to their friends and go watch this and then sexually harass somebody. Jason, I get that you don't have any real hobbies, but since you have so much fucking free time on your hands, might I recommend prison? <laughs> now I wanted to tie back to the Gillette ad, which is a year or two old now that this is what they established as normal. This was a big takeaway from the video. To act the right uh, way. Bro, not cool, not cool. Okay, so the problem with this is obvious. What they're saying is that approaching a woman in public is bad. If a woman- Generally, yes, yes it is. There are certain situations that it's like understood that there's the potential for social interaction, like maybe like, a club or like a bar, depending on the atmosphere of the bar. But even then, it's it's like highly contextual. But like, yeah, don't approach people in the street, you fucking asshole. No one wants you to come up to them and be like, hey, baby, can I get your number? No, fuck off. If you if you are horny, go on Tinder, okay? We have, we have moved all the general horniness to Tinder and Twitter DMs, okay? If you're horny, take it there. Someone's just trying to walk to work or the gym and you're trying to bang them. Stop. <laughs> and wants to go over the top, basically criminalize that behavior. That is socially acceptable. So <laughs> what we are seeing happen is a large portion of women are trying to take complete control of their mating strategy via the internet and dating apps and social media and being hyper aggressive and hostile towards any guys that approach them in person. So the costs, the ramifications of this, it's the denial of the our human species itself. It's removing and sterilizing. Did you know that the human species is predicated upon approaching strange women in public and trying to hit on them? That's actually what the sapien and homo sapien means. Sapien is uh, Latin for being a fucking creep. <laughs> Any kind of positive romance interaction that makes life exciting and also is creating this very tyrannical and oppressive system in society that completely sterilizes all interaction between men and women. So you can go on about how damaging it is and how we could quantify that as far as the massive upsurge in depression, suicide, and misery of- <laughs> The depression rates going up have nothing to do with income inequality, uh, poverty, hopelessness for the future in the face of challenges like climate change and the rise of right-wing extremism. It's all because I can't go up to women and be like, hey baby, you wanna see my dick? <laughs> young men in particular that these people are responsible for. But I've got some really fantastic examples of why this is happening and we're gonna tie it to some popular theories in evolutionary psychology. Oh you God, I hate nothing more than when MGTOW assholes will try and back up their bullshit with like, 
here's how evolution works, so let me explain why harassing women is actually uh, great and in my nature. Get you a better idea of why that's happening. So it all kind of boils down to putting a lot of female leadership in and- Please tell me this guy's ratioed in likes to dislikes. Bad news! Vast majority approve. It's <laughs> 6 thousand likes to 148 dislikes. <laughs> also how people are reacting to social media and things like that it's exactly what we would expect and that first one is that women specifically female leaders are trying to create a culture that revolves around degrading feminizing and shaming men in order to make them easier to manipulate and control so take a look at this <laughs> i heard that last week i think kamala harris or kamala harris was on the news and she said uh, our policy for the first 100 days is uh, force feminize all men. I thought it was shocking, and I was like, I think you should probably do an aid package or $15 minimum wage. But she's like, no, we're going to force feminize all the men. And I was like, okay, I guess. <laughs> do you. <laughs> this video. One of the things that we do internally and that I have been starting to do to tackle bias is something I call flip the pronouns. And so uh, I did this with one of our hair care teams uh, the other, uh, uh, probably a couple of months ago, and they came to me with an ad campaign. But the proposed tagline at the end of the ad campaign was, when she looks good, she can be her best. And I said, okay, hang on for a minute here. Let's just flip the pronoun. And it was a male marketing lead. And I said, now I want you to say that tagline again with the same fervor and passion with <laughs> he in the, in the line. And he started with, and when he looks good, and he couldn't finish the sentence. <laughs> and he started laughing, and I said, if you can't finish the sentence with he instead of she, please don't say it for women. That's right. And so... Um, and that's not unreasonable, the idea being, like, you're, you're, you're marketing things to women in a very specific way. That way being preying on um, uh, already established cultural forces of insecurity placed upon women by the beauty industry, right? And culture as a whole. And that's reasonable for her to point that out and say, hey, we should change the way that we talk about these things in advertising and in everyday life because it's unhealthy mentally for people to have to deal with that inundation of the idea that their value is based on their looks day in and day out. That's not an unreasonable position. <laughs> <sighs> Hi, Kitty. All right, to address this specific video first, we can see that if the slogan has, when she looks good, she can be your best. The obvious thing here is who is the ad slogan talking to? So if this is an ad directed towards men in order to buy a gift for women around Valentine's Day, like a necklace or a bracelet, for example, it makes sense to say, when she looks good, she can be your best to that guy, because that's who you're speaking to. Just like if it were an ad for a tie around Valentine's Day, it would be no problem to tell the women that the ad was directed to her to say, when he looks his best. You know, all those tie ads that we see regularly. He can be his best. When he looks good, he can be his best. That's because it's talking to the women. That's an obvious, anybody can see that that's just an issue about who you're targeting an ad with, and if there's a mistake with who the target audience is, then you just correct that. It doesn't have to do with all the sexism and all the gender war stuff. Okay, but the point that she's making is that, like, ads targeted at women disproportionately involve the idea that your self-worth is based on your looks. That's the point? Do you get that? That's the point. The only ads I've ever seen, I think, even imply anything about the looks of men are, ironically, razor commercials. Like, sometimes you'll have a, you know, cleanly shaved face of a guy and then his wife or girlfriend or whoever will come up and be like, ooh, smooth face, let's fuck or whatever. Um, but for the vast majority of ads for targeted towards men, it's not about that. It'll sometimes more generally be about, like, some perception of manliness or some perception of... Um, not necessarily physical looks, but what's the word I'm looking for? Desirability, but like it's different, right? It's very different. And that's fine to point out. Double standards and ads and the way that we talk about people based on their gender culturally is an important conversation because things aren't what they are just out of a vacuum. They exist as part of our cultural zeitgeist. And it's worth noting how we talk about these things because how we talk about these things are how we think about not only other people, but ourselves. It matters to have these discussions. 
But what's happening here is leaders like Carolyn Tasted are utilizing this oppressive tyrannical culture and they're <laughs> utilizing. It's tyrannical for you to tell me not to go and harass women on the street. Did you know that? Okay. You might as well put a little star on my jacket that says harasser. Okay. This isn't okay. The human resources that has basically been weaponized against men and she gets her male marketing lead in there and basically has him do his little song and dance gesture act by forcing him to say this and basically to exert power and control over him and to reassert her. Hey, um, don't know how to tell you this. She already has power and control over him. She, he, he's her employee. <laughs> do you know how that works? Self is having this dominant power within the company so she says say it again like this stares him down he knows the underlying threat is if he doesn't he risks the accusation of being sexist misogynistic she's illustrating a point to try and get him to understand the ridiculousness of the ad slogan what backwards thinking ignorant and all this stuff and being sent to HR, having his entire life and career ended. So when he picks up on that signal from her, which is exactly what she's doing, he just submits to what she wants, even though it has nothing to do with any kind of logic or reason whatsoever. It's about them exerting control over guys using this narrative. <laughs> That's the most backward interpretation of her description of the scenario I think I've ever heard. The idea that a boss explaining to an employee hey do this exercise with me and i will illustrate to you the ridiculousness of the kind of thing that you are pushing in the advertising and him saying this is just her trying to dominate him she doesn't need to dominate him she's the boss what are you talking about <laughs> she's trying to get her point across so she can explain to her employee why she wants things done a certain way which is reasonable to do as the boss <sighs> so with that being said, we're going to talk about why we're creating this culture that revolves around degrading and shaming men in order to make them easier to manipulate and control. So it's the same thing that we've been seeing for decades as far as the ads that are designed to target mothers, wives, and family units as far as degrading, shaming, and buffoon out of the husband figure because it degrades him. It's interesting to me that he didn't just say women and he said mothers and wives. And I might be reading too far into it, but the idea that he's like describing women not as individuals, but their relation to men, I find that kind of interesting, psychologically. And validates the woman of the household for a variety of reasons. So she likes to feel like she's the smart, capable one in the house. Also, it makes him easier to shame, manipulate, and control. But what we were seeing is that this mentality is now being placed on all levels of culture now that women are dominating the narrative via social media and taking all these power positions on. So this is exactly- Women are still a minority in basically all positions of power. It's not equitable. <laughs> women make up 50% of the population. Unless women are 50% of people in power structures, whether we're talking about governmental positions or positions in other places of power like corporations, then they're underrepresented. Do you understand how proportionality works? <laughs> Jesus Christ. After what we would expect in a post-social media environment. So I'm gonna tie this to a theory in evolutionary psychology, which is that we have evolved as people in order to have characteristics that promote group cohesion. And that is- Let me take a look, hold on. Demographic makeup of Congress. So the new Congress is the most racially and ethnically diverse ever. This is about race, though. Do we have, is this, no, no gender. Let me see. Gender. Here we go. Um, last year was called the Year of Women, and that was particularly true for Democrat Democratic lawmakers. Women won more than 60% of the seats Democrats flipped. Of the 42 women new Congress this year, 38 are Democrats. 
Overall, uh, 127 women are serving in Congress, 25 in the Senate, and 102 in the House. Um, so let me see. Uh, women who are 50% of the population, sometimes 51%, depending on where you're talking about, make up only 25% of the Senate, so they're 25% underrepresented relative to their makeup in the general population. And how many House seats are there again? How many House seats are there? Do, 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 do. 222 plus 211 would be 433 or so. So let's see, 100. So again, it's about a quarter. So women are making up a quarter of people in the legislature of the United States, just as an example, despite the fact that they're half of the population, yet somehow this person believes that women are dominating culture by nature of being underrepresented in government and positions of power? <laughs> Any women anywhere is bad, I guess. Whatever. That's because you can pass on your genetics a variety of ways. Through yourself, that's directly reproducing with a female kin, that's looking after your nieces and nephew, and the third is phenotype, and that's looking after your outward sexual characteristics and your group's interests. So we've evolved characteristics that encourage group cohesion so that we can dominate and control all the other groups. One of those characteristics is that when men try to... Sorry, yeah, 50% less, 25 percentage points less, but it's 50% less representation than they should have relative to the general population. Sorry. Challenge social norms, they rebel against authority, that's destructive to group cohesion and it hurts the chance of being powerful and dominating the other groups. <laughs> When people like this talk about group cohesion, typically they mean people are doing things I don't like, so if you could stop, that would be great. That's what group cohesion means to these people. So what women, we will see them do is they socially attack that guy. They shame, degrade him, they attack his reputation, they attack the way he looks, they attack all these... Wait, which guy are you saying they're doing this to? Destructive challenge groups. Encourage group cohesion. We've evolved characteristics that encourage group cohesion so that we can dominate and control all the other groups. One of those characteristics is that when men try to challenge social norms, they rebel against authority, that's destructive to group cohesion and it hurts the chance of being powerful and dominating the other groups. So why do you think that dominating other groups is a positive thing? Why are you championing that? Like we should be working towards a societal structure that puts at the top of its priority list dominating others? What? What women, we will see them do is they socially attack that guy. They shame, degrade him, they attack his reputation, they attack the way he looks, they attack all these, his masculinity and his sexuality. And the goal is to get him to submit so he reorients himself in a submissive way into the social hierarchy of the tribe right? why does it have to be submission and not just not being a dick just don't be a dick you not dominating people is not submitting it's being an equal with others it's recognizing that you are one person among many in a society what are you talking about rather than doing all this rebellious destructive behavior and if he doesn't do that, they socially ostracize him. So when Denny Sume says, uh, when he says fe phenotype, this is all I can hear. Uh, gotta leave in five minutes. Look at this before I go. Okay. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Fine. I love Boy Meets World. In our modern society, have basically imprinted this global tribe onto their heads via social media and the news and all that stuff. So they're inundated with all this toxic, undesirable, out of whack behavior from men nonstop. See ya, Daddy Sume. Thanks for coming. Um, I'll see you in a few days. So the natural reaction that we're seeing them doing is trying to create an entire culture that revolves around degrading and shaming men in order to make them easier to manipulate and control. Question, who's doing this? As we already established, women aren't in majority power anywhere. 
they're being underrepresented. So who exactly is perpetrating this grand scheme to dominate men? <laughs> so there's a massive amount of problems that are coming from that, but that is a basic theory as to why that's happening. That's number one. They're creating a culture that revolves around degrading and shaming men. And this is just because this is the natural reaction that we see from women because that's how they exert control and influence over men in their natural state. It's the natural way that men and women interact. So. Right-wingers and MGTOW people tend to fall into this too. They're obsessed with this idea of a natural state, a natural hierarchy. This is one of the reasons right-wingers, by the way, will go to bat and kind of lick boot for hierarchy because people like us who are leftists or on the left or whatever tend to look at all hierarchy or most hierarchy as it exists today as unjust. I think rightfully so because a lot of the hierarchies that we see, most of them are not built upon any sort of meritocracy or whatever. They're built on nepotism and, and uh, dynastic dynamics, right? These are bad things. Um, but people like this guy, people like a lot of conservatives, instead look at those same hierarchies and they don't see that these are hierarchies built upon not meritocracy or any sort of organizational structure that makes sense. It's basically based upon who can get to the top and who can stay there based upon manipulating other people. They don't see that. What they see is a natural system. They believe that if you are at the top of a hierarchy, that means that you deserve to be there, period. And if you're at the bottom of the hierarchy, it means you suck and that you failed at life and you deserve it. So, it's interesting to me that this is how they feel about it. It's interesting to see how people look at hierarchies differently. It's weird. Lobsters, yeah, Jordan Peterson stuff. So, it's exactly what we would expect. The second one is they are advocating for their personal, social, sexual... It's borderline, like, thinking along the lines of divine right of kings, except on, on every social strata. It's the idea that you exist where you are for a reason. You're almost divinely intended for your purpose, and if you're at the bottom of the hierarchy, it's, it's because it's your fault. You have been deemed unworthy to sit atop the hierarchy and dominate others, even though often the ways people get to the top are unscrupulous, right? ...agenda above everything else. Now, take a look at these three clips. I've got three different female leaders that are all doing the exact same thing. First one is Sheryl Sandberg, CEO of Facebook. Second one is Bonnie Ross. She's the head of 343 Industries. She's in charge of Halo. And the third is Carolyn Tasted and the video that P&G put out. And I'm not trying to hate on this situation. This is the natural condition for women. And again, exactly what we'd expect when they're placed in these positions. I'm gonna explain why, but take a look at these videos and then we'll talk. The husband who does the laundry, it's very romantic when you're older and it's hard to believe when you're younger, but it's absolutely true. Actually, the studies show this. Husbands who do more housework have more sex with their wives. There's studies that show this? Studies that show this. We have a lot of really strong female characters. Okay. That's something that I'm really passionate about, and a lot of the women on the team are as well. Okay, and then... Number two, advocate for personal, social, sexual agenda. It's an... It, uh, uh, what? <laughs> Wanting f competent female characters with agency is bad now? Why? And then the clips that I'm going to show right here after those two are from the PNG clip where they are constantly putting out these shows of women in these power positions and guys doing the laundry or these house chores. So this... Right, it's them saying that traditional gender roles aren't something that you have to adhere to. Now that doesn't mean that if you're a man, you can't go out and be like a CEO and try and climb a corporate ladder. And it doesn't mean if you're a woman, you can't decide to be a stay-at-home mom and, and all the work that entails with that. You can, but it's saying that anyone can do what they want to do. That's a freedom that you have, and that's a wonderful thing. You shouldn't allow antiquated gender roles to dictate who you are. You can be whoever you want as long as you're not hurting other people. This makes sense that they're trying to validate the women that have chosen these career paths. And the reason why we see so much effort to push this from these female leaders is, again, tied to evolutionary psychology. So. Men and women over hundreds of thousands of years, if a man was ostracized from a group, 
he could likely survive on his own. It was also necessary for men within a tribe to challenge social norms, to challenge how- Did he just say men could sur- No. In the history of humanity, if you get kicked out of your tribe and you have to go wander in the wilderness alone, you're not going to survive very long. Humans are social species and re we rely on each other typically for survival. Is it possible to go live alone in the woods with a spear and, and trying to hunt your own food and subsistence farm? Sure, but it's going to be difficult and a terrible life. Human beings thrive in societies and groups with other people status men in order to move up within the tribe so men often had to be rebellious in order to do that and if they got ostracized they might survive if women did the same thing if they did anything these things were outside of a tribe's social norms and they were ostracized the chances that they would die are extremely high so this could be an explanation for the trend that we see that women are hyper concerned with getting constant validation as oh god <laughs> Women are con in constant need of validation, yet this guy is still upset that a Razor ad told him to not be a dick two years ago. <laughs> I don't require validation. Also, remember when an, a Razor company told me I shouldn't harass women? Ah! as well as hyper-reactive to any kind of social criticism. So that is why women are constantly looking to get validated for whatever their life choices are. And also with these female leaders, which they're massively out of whack with what our natural condition is as men and women. So Natural condition, AKA my backward antiquated beliefs about gender roles. We see this intense palpable guilt, shame, self-hatred that they're constantly trying to validate. So for the high power women, it's all about promoting their lifestyle choices as normal. So Because they are normal. It's also normal if you wanna stay home and have kids and be a stay at home like mom, or if you wanna be a stay at home dad, it's fine. As long as you can like survive and make ends meet, Good for you. Who cares? Funny about the well, that's why we see the social agenda of constantly promoting the idea that these women in power positions is normal and all these guys doing chores in the laundry is acceptable. So <laughs> do you not do your laundry? <laughs> Clean your house. What are you doing? <laughs> Jesus. They constantly want to reaffirm this non-stop in order to support their own decisions and personal dilemma they have with the choices that they've made. So we've seen that very, very consistently with practically all female leaders. And it's not necessarily bad. It's just a trend that we're seeing that's part, in part an explanation for all these things that are happening. All right, and the third one is that they utilize identity politics to advance their own personal social sexual agenda. So that means putting up groups against each other and fighting for these systems that are equity based with their own personal agenda at the root of it. So Oh no, equity based policy making, equity based social structure. But if everyone's equal, at least in law and in, in, in social expectations, then I'll have to actually look at myself as a human being and realize that I'm a 30 something year old single man who's mad at a razor commercial who doesn't know how to do his own laundry. And I won't even be able to say that I'm better just for having a penis. The horror. <laughs> Grow up. <laughs> Take a look at these three examples and I'll talk about why this is happening. We've also chosen to focus our efforts on access to education for girls and economic empowerment for women. And then finally, what's really important to us is creating an environment and a workplace where all of our people can thrive. And we're committed to getting to 50-50 representation at all levels of the company and all disciplines. Yeah. Can I just say that this shot is the most frustrating to me? Like, I, I don't shoot promotional videos, but this is not a, okay. So, how do I put this? 
It looks like it's trying to be like a split diopter shot, but it's clearly not, and they just put that PNG logo in the background in focus, even though the background that it is placed upon is not in focus. So it's very distracting, because if this was actually shot in this room, this shot would be impossible. Like, it sh she and the background should not be in focus right here. If they used a split diopter, it would be fine, but they not they're not. They just put... Her in focus, and then they put a, a, a like an image of the PNG logo right there. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Am I just ranting into the wind? I don't know. <laughs> it's just, it just throws me off. <laughs> Getting to 50-50 representation at all levels of the company and all disciplines. Yeah, you know, I think diversity does attract diversity. So I think we have a more diverse team. Exactly no progress in closing the wage gap for women in this country. Since 2002, women across the board have been paid 77 cents to the dollar. If you're a woman of color, African-American women are paid 64 cents, Latinas are paid 54 cents. All right, so there's a variety of theories as to why this is happening. I'm gonna give you three of them. So the first one is that women in nature are biologically programmed to look at top tier guys, top 20. Oh God, here we go with the alpha male bullshit. 20% or so and then ignore, degrade, or dislike the rest of guys. This forces guys to perform in order to become higher status to get access to women. Now, tie this again to the problem that we've created this global tribe via social media and the internet and all that. Do I need to explain that none of that is like scientifically backed up? Like it's not like, at least not in the way he's describing. Like everyone to some extent finds certain groups of people attractive, whether we're talking about men or women, whether you're straight or bi or pan or whatever you happen to be. People are attracted to attractive people. That's understandable. But it has nothing to do with like larger social dynamics where you think that there's like a top 20% of men that are like getting all the women and then everyone else is single. Because most people aren't single. <laughs> That's not how it works. And what's happening is women are comparing themselves to the top 5% athletes, CEOs, these super rich guys, and then saying that they're oppressed based on that while they degrade or dislike the remainder of guys. This is causing a lot of problems as far as feeling perpetually oppressed. It's an unsolvable problem. See, this is why you need to be based like me and just hate everyone equally, okay? That's the proper egalitarian way to go about it. I hate everyone. Tying that to a couple examples would be the gender pay gap, which really blew up as this supposedly huge problem about 10 years ago. It was then- That's been an issue for a, hold on. This is not a new issue. Look at this PSA from the 1970s, okay? The gender pay gap is not a new issue. A ticking bomb means trouble for Batman and Robin. Holy breaking and entering! It's Batgirl! Quick, Batgirl, untie us before it's too late. It's already too late. I've worked for you a long time and I'm paid less than Robin. Same job, same employer means equal pay for men and, and women. No. Can I just point out that Batman's a complete dick? <laughs> because apparently it's canon that he pays Batgirl less than Robin. Like, what the fuck? No time for jokes, Batgirl. No time for jokes, Batgirl. I can't pay you more. <laughs> it's no joke. It's the federal equal pay law. Holy act of Congress. If you're not getting equal pay, contact the Wage and Hour Division, U.S. Department of Labor. So that was when um, the actual act went into place that made it illegal for two people to... Uh, get paid differently based on their gender for the same job. It is nonetheless still an issue that takes place, especially because in the United States, very rarely do people know what their co-workers are making because it's sort of a social stigma to talk about it, which it shouldn't be. That's a way that employers take advantage of their workforce so they don't talk about their wages with each other so they can stifle pay. It's ridiculous. Anyway.
premised on the fact that women account for around 70% of consumer spending while working about 40% of the work hours, which equates to men are doing most of the working while men, women are doing most of the spending. So the entire premise is broken on that alone. And then on top of that, we are seeing because of this massive effort to solve the gender pay gap, despite the fact that men are working more and they're working more dangerous jobs, they're working longer and into their 30s, 40s, and 50s, whereas women are choosing to raise families, which is awesome if they want to do that okay but it's also good if they choose not to do that and if men want to be like stay-at-home dads that's also fine as long as they make some sort of arrangement where they're still like one of them if they have enough money to sustain themselves that way you know what i'm saying it's fine either way well what's happening is they're manipulating all this data in order to advance the interest of women and as it became more apparent that white women in western societies have all these massive advantages they start looking to these other demographics for example with a Sheryl Sandberg quote she refers to a study because it has been debunked that there is no gender pay gap and there are when you account for expertise and hours and things like that now <laughs> when we're talking about the wage gap we're usually talking about a career gap as well we're talking about the fact that women are socialized to prefer caregiving positions that often pay less and those positions often pay less because they are considered women jobs whereas jobs for men are paid more for a variety of reasons up to and including the danger factor it's culturally assumed that dangerous jobs will be filled by men which isn't really any reason to do that it doesn't necessarily make sense you know what i mean um that's kind of what's being discussed is the social pressures being put on people funneling them towards sor certain life paths that put them in higher wage brackets versus lower wage brackets all these problems as far as women having unfair advantages, they start looking to other demographics in order to continue to justify that narrative to push women into leadership roles to validate the egos of the women that are in these power positions in the first place. You're not even addressing the fact that even though they did bring up like women of color making even less money than white women, which is just intersectionality, like they... They, they still pointed out that the wage gap shows that women still make less money even if they're white women. So you're not really addressing that point, but okay. Like Sheryl Sandberg or the rest. So it all kind of ties together that way. The second example I'm gonna tie it to is the education situation. So the gap now has not been as large for men over women since the 1950s, 70 years ago, as far as around 60% of people going to college now are women with 40% being men. So rather than addressing that situation and advocating for male men going to school, they simply look to other demographics in order to continue to push this narrative because they ideologically want to reinforce their own personal social sexual agenda. They want more women. I think everyone should have access to education. I'm in favor of everyone getting education in the United States funded by the government. So I don't know what you're talking about, but okay getting into these power positions, leadership positions, and they're willing to do whatever it takes to get it. So they're manipulating these studies using identity politics and intersectionality. So the, and then I just wanted to say one more thing, tying this to evolutionary psychology, is that women have a more equity-based mindset while men have a more hierarchy-based mindset. And the theory there is that men promote performance in order to have strength in the tribe so they can defend themselves, conquer, dominate other tribes, whereas women promote equity-based systems so that the tribe carries on with greater numbers. So that's why- All you're doing is describe- You're not making the, the, the men thing sound good. Like, again, yes, citation needed. I know, it's all like pseudo- science bullshit that he's saying anyway but like even within the framework he is describing if it were true his version would be bad he's literally saying we need men to lead so we can dominate others no <laughs> you asshole I, we see this trend that women are more equity based where men are more hierarchical based <gasps> equity oh the horror potentially could be an explanation and also because for a variety of reasons, women like chaos and conflict within groups as far as having lots of different guys competing with each other in order to establish who the dominant guys are. So what? They very often will promote these kind of divisive identity politics. They navigate these 
scenarios a lot better than guys do, right? So I have some really good content as far as how they are justifying all this. I was thinking about putting in this video, but I didn't want to go too much longer. So if you think these concepts are interesting, I'd really love it if you clicked on that video or clicked on some of my other content. It tells YouTube that you like this stuff and we can keep getting this message out there, refining it so that we can come up with viable solutions to combat this and we definitely have some you're seeing these unexpected real world solutions come up very quickly and i'm really happy to talk about those and get your insight but i really need you guys to continue to support the channel to do that so with all that being said hope you liked the video and i'll see you next time well that was terrible <laughs> oh god let's see what the comments have to say David said, there's one detail you're missing. Social media is not reality, no matter how many likes and followers women may get. Men still live in the real world and are increasingly avoiding women because they see where things are going. <laughs> oh, good lord. After that ad, I literally stopped buying Gillette. Wait a minute, I thought these people hated cancel culture. Hmm... Funny. So, mission is back. Um, I'm not glad, except for the material. So, we'll be looking at him again in the future. Let's get to some bit messages and then we'll move on to the next thing. Um, wing the ultimate nug with 40 bits weight. This is what is destroying society? I guess so. Dr. Xanadu with 20 bits. They should pick up people like a normal person by hammering a four-inch nail into their nose. That's how you flirt, right? I've been doing magic too long. Don't get that reference. Uh, McCurry3585, thank you for following. MMO addicted to 20 bits. Me at a bar trying to flirt. Oh, hey, baby, my life is a mess. I don't get my gender and I want to go to sleep and never wake up. Do you want to share the burden of existential dread with me? <laughs> Swoon. Kirthen with 100 bits. Some guy at my college wrote a mathematical proof on why pedophilia is correct. He got kicked out. <laughs> Good. Killjoy102 with 100 bits. I, for one, welcome our femdom overlords. Daddy Sume with 20 bits. Or cologne commercials. They use they, use they himbos coated in oil. I That was difficult to understand. Uh, Wanfro, thank you for following. Stephen J. Neptune Man of 25 Bits says, What's the old saying? Equality feels like oppression to the privileged. Daddy Sume with 20 Bits. As someone who is very familiar with domination, this is absolutely not that. These vanilla chuds need to be dominated for real for once. Like, seriously, humiliate these people for, for real for once and they might actually shut up. Lily loves stuff with 20 bits. Honestly, some men really need to be shamed into doing basic stuff like washing their ass properly. 74 Quinn 74. As someone who grew up with my mom by far being the dominant parent, this shit ain't it. Daddy Sume with the, the, the Feeny clip. Thank you. Sideways Sunday with 20 bits. Hey chat, how's everyone doing today? Uh, Hannah Reloaded, thanks due to your video today, I've fallen deep into the Stephen Christ rabbit hole. Did I cover Stephen Christ recently? <laughs> Jeez. A Colston with 20 bits. Did you hear that Pelosi is taking advantage of Tesla insider trading after saying that Republicans profiting off pandemics was bad? Disgusting. I didn't see that. Um... MMO addicted with 20 bits. Have I ever mentioned why I hate far right co-opting the OK sign so much? There's a lot of photos online of me doing it since it's one of the main diving signs for one-handed underwater communication. And I used to dive in a scuba diving club back in the day. I'm even licensed. Whenever I see them nowadays, I cringe inside. That sucks. Um, Tarthangle, thank you for following. Cupcake Chaos with 50 bits. This is the personification of toxic masculinity, angry at aspects of toxic fe femininity. Am I in the Twilight Zone? Um, Demibird44, thank you for resubscribing. Says, yay, figured out how to sub with Prime. Razzletazzle91 with a thousand bits says, uh, hey, beautiful people, it's the Welsh version of Valentine's Day today. Dinward Saint Hopswin Hoppus. I butchered that, I guarantee it. Lily, 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 Lily loves stuff with 20 bits. Sounds like this guy gets a social hierarchy from the Omegaverse. Oh god, I wish I didn't understand that reference. <laughs> We're not going to talk, talk about nodding today, though. 
Crispity Crunch, thank you for following. Tucker White 94 with 20 bits. I feel like I just stumbled into a wormhole back to 2016 YouTube at the height of SJW craze. I can't believe I used to eat this shit up. <laughs> we can't do Tate now. Femdom Baja says no. She can't tell me what to do. <laughs> what are you going to do about it, Baja? You're not even here right now. <laughs> okay, let's see what we're going to do next. Okay, we... I know, Baha. I'm just joking. Uh... Okay, let's do... We haven't seen Elliot Hulse in a while. He took a bit of a break. Let's take a look at... Uh... Yeah, let's take a look at Elliot Hulse. <laughs> it's not going to go good. The culture of Marxists is to understand that in order to destroy the society, it's all about destroying the father, the primordial pattern of the culture. That means you make them atheists and sexual deviants. When you get God and the father, when you destroy religion and sexuality, society's done. That civilization is done. It's only a matter of time. And people think sexual deviance is uh liberation but it's nothing but domination look up for the record when he says sexual deviance he means like lgbt people existing so that's great e michael jones libido libido dominandi the best way the way you start controlling the population is you make them sexual degenerates they think they're free but now they're slaves of their sexual desire yo elliot <laughs> How important is it to be married before having children? I have to go, but appreciate your insight. Man, I can give you my opinion, but I've got a lot of old school, traditional trad con ideas um, that I think are going to make a comeback in our degenerate world that's falling apart. <laughs> Every conservative throughout history, we're only days away from going back to that mythical period in time where everything was how I thought it should be. I don't know how to tell you this, Elliot. That mythical period of the 1950s or whenever you think the world was not degenerate would not have treated you very well, unfortunately. There's no such thing as a golden period in history where everything was great and fine. The past was shit. All we can do in the present is hope that it's less shit and can continue to try and make things better. Coming apart by the seams? Um... And it's not expedient, but the world has completely accepted decadence, degeneracy, and diabolical disorientation as a normal way of being. So when I share my opinions, you got to understand that it might not even seem quote unquote practical, but I think that it is of your best interest. I, I think it's a very good idea to be married when you have children. I even think that the integrity that the child feels I think the child, there's an integrity that the child experiences, senses in its soul when the mother and father are bonded that way. No, because kids don't come out of the womb knowing what marriage is. I understand the idea that if you have uh, two parents, them having a strong bond and being like non-abusive and being like a wonderful couple and really caring about each other and them working together for the best of the child of course that's wonderful you want that in parents of course but the idea that the kid gives a shit if they have a legal contract together and had a ceremony not really the kid cares about the day-to-day -day. the kid cares about how they see their parents treat each other they care about how the parents treat them they don't care if they have a piece of paper somewhere that says we are financially and legally bound together. <laughs> it's irrelevant. Come one flesh. Prior to degeneracy becoming normal, prior to everybody having fuck buddies and baby daddies and abortions. I don't know how to break it to this guy, but people have been fucking since the beginning of time. 
since human beings became Homo sapiens, and I'm sure before that, I'm sure Homo habilis got it on all the time. It's probably why we're here. My point is, there's never been a point in human history where human beings have not been engaged in sexual activity with each other. People sleep together all the time. Abortions have been a thing. Like, as long as humans have been a thing and we understood that pregnancy was a thing that existed. This is not new. People just didn't talk about it back in, like, the 50s and stuff because it was considered taboo to talk about. They didn't come into existence in the 1970s. There was shame associated with having a baby out of wedlock. I think one of the things that we need to bring back is shame. And they used to call babies that were born out of wedlock bastards. Okay, so what you're saying is they've always existed? Great. Ain't real nice, right? Because how many of how many of you guys? I don't, I'm not calling you bastards. I'm just showing you the way things have changed. But how many of you guys? You know. You okay, so you're illustrating that people used to be shamed due to the circumstances of their birth that were entirely out of their control, and you would like to return to that period? Great. Your, your parents had you. You're born out of wedlock. Most of my friends. Most of my friends. They have, they, they just got, they're just together. They're just together. They live together. They have babies. Okay. So you must think they're decent enough people because they're your friends. If you thought they were degenerate pieces of shit, why would they be your friends? I don't think it's right. Not only do I not think it's right, but science has shown, evident statistics have shown that Children that are born to parents that are out of wedlock don't thrive as well in society. They don't do as well. They have more problems. Source? Can I get a source on that? And I don't think it's just good enough that the mom and dad are together. I think that there is a, there's a, there's a, there's a soul tie. There's a, there's a spiritual covenant there is a lifelong agreement, a solid ground to stand on for the family. It's a piece of paper. People can get divorced. You being married doesn't mean you're in a more committed relationship than someone who also intends to be or intends to stay together forever, but just doesn't have a legal agreement to do so. You don't need a piece of paper to make your relationship count. It's fine. When the parents are married before they have the children. But then again, 70% divorce, 90% are initiated by women. Okay, divorce is good. If people got married and they're unhappy now, they should be able to leave that relationship. That's a good thing. In the past, there were just as many women who didn't want to be in the relationships that they were in, but they were either coerced through the fact that they couldn't sustain themselves outside of a marriage because they weren't allowed to have jobs for a long period of time in American society, or outright threats of, like, violence, or it was illegal to get divorced for a long period of time. None of those things are good. They're just being forced into staying in an awful, potentially abusive relationship. That's bad. The whole, our whole world is crumbling and it's imploding because the family has been attacked. How has the family been attacked? Allowing different groups of people arranged in different ways than like nuclear straight married family to be considered families isn't the crumbling of the family unit. It's the expansion of what we understand to be the family unit. You don't have to be a, a straight guy, a straight cis guy, and a straight cis woman with two and a half kids in order to be, you know, a family. You can be two men, two women, trans, cis, any mix of those things. You could have kids. You could not have kids. You could be married. You could not be married. You could adopt kids. You could do surrogacy. These are all families, and they're all valid. There's nothing wrong with that. The last battle will be for the family. So, you know, as a Catholic, I like to read and learn about these apparitions. 
I don't know exactly what the word apparition means. <laughs> I should look it up. But but they're basically um, events where people will encounter Jesus or Mary in their lives. There are these Marian apparitions where Mary, the mother of Jesus, comes to certain people throughout history, and they've been approved by the church. You know, make it of what you want. But just okay, I, I, again, I don't like to comment on religion a ton on this channel, because it's just not what it's about. And even though on, like, the, the Hannah and Jake channel, we deal with religion stuff, because that's the nature of how we started the channel, I'm just not as interested in it these days, right? I think I've said about all I can possibly say about religion at this point. If you are Catholic and you believe these things whatever, but you should not be making policy decisions or decisions on how society should function based upon claims by the church or individuals in that church that they have had divine intervention by supernatural events happening. You can personally believe in these things, but you should not use these unfalsifiable, unprovable claims to inform how you think society should function. Because that's ridiculous. You would never allow that from anyone else. If someone who was, like, Muslim came to you and said, Oh, the Prophet Muhammad came to me and said such and such thing is how society should function. You would probably never take that at their word. You would say that they were mistaken or something along those lines. And you would probably be right. But you need to apply that consistently to everyone. We need evidence-based policy making. You cannot just say, well, I, I had this supernatural experience and I'm going to use this personal supernatural experience to inform my political views. That's backwards. You cannot do that. Just listen to what I have to say. There's one that was called the Lady of Good Success where uh, Mary came to this nun in Portugal, I think, or somewhere in South America in like the 1500s. And she explained to this nun what was going to happen over the course of the next, like, she didn't give her the time frame, but she said that the, there are various things that are going to happen as the world is starting to come to an end and starting to unravel at the seams. And all of them, I mean, this is an apparition for a couple hundred years ago. I don't know if it was a 1500 or 1600, anyway, it was a couple hundred years ago. Look it up, the lady of good success. Let's take a look. Oh, it's like a prayer. Hold on, do we have a prayer? The following is the main context of our fall wind. Oh, that's a newsletter. They just have a, come on. Oh, this is a terribly designed web page. Okay. The first apparition of Our Lady of Good Success occurred on February 2nd, 1589. This occurred several months after Mariana received the stigmata from Our Lord, which was invisible except <laughs> when she first received that. Trust me, guys, I have stigmata. They're invisible, but they're there. <laughs> how, how easy was it to trick people back in the day? Guys, I, I miraculously had stigmata. Oh, can I see them? No, they're invisible. Oh. <gasps> She suffered the dark night of the soul with physical, mental, and spiritual anguishes during this time. Our Lady appeared to her to finally relieve her of mental and spiritual afflictions and said, uh, Why do you fear, my daughter? Do you not know that I am with you in your tribulation? I am Mother of Heaven, whom you invoked. I have come to dissipate the darkness of the night of your soul. 
In September 1589, after suffering hell and the purgatory for a whole year and dying once again, she returned to health to continue to fulfill her sacrificial mission for us. The second apparition of Our Lady of Good Success happened on February 2nd, 1594, when Mother Mariana was imploring heaven for the good of her con convent and for the end of the many sins being committed in the world. When she was finished, she rose and found a most beautiful lady who carried the child Jesus in her left arm. She addressed her, I am Mary of good success, the queen of heaven and earth. I have come from the heaven to console your afflicted. Okay, where's the, where's the, <laughs> oh no. Okay, here's the, here's the prophecy. Ugh. I hate prophecies. She told Mother Mariana, these years during which the accursed sect of masonry will take control of civil government will see a cruel persecution of all religious communities and will also strike out violently this one of mine. These unfortunate men will think the covenant destroyed, but God lives and I live. So they think that Freemasons are going to control the government. Um, fourth apparition. There will be a total corruption of customs, for Satan will reign almost completely by means of Masonic sects. Again, they think Freemasons are going to control the world? The devil will try to persecute the ministers of the Lord in every way possible. He will labor with cruel and subtle uh, ass oh, astuteness to deviate them from their spirit of their vocation and will corrupt many of them. These depraved priests who will scandalize the Christian people will make the hatred of bad Catholics and the enemies of Roman Catholics and apost uh, apostolic church fall upon all priests. This apparent triumph of Satan will bring enormous suffering to the good pastors in the church. In this supreme moment of need of the church, the one who should speak will fall silent. Let's see. The church will find herself attacked by terrible hordes of the mace. A lot of this is about Freemasonry. This is mostly about Freemasonry. The faithful souls will suffer continuous and slow martyrdom. Maso Again, Masonic. It's all about Masonry. <laughs> uh, does Elliot Hulse think Freemasons control the world? Or what? God, I gotta get a front light. <laughs> My lighting is so bad. Our Lady of Good Success. And she describes how at the very last stance, when Satan has basically put the knife in and is twisting it for the death of humanity, he says the last, she says the last battle will be for the family. When you see the family under attack, that's when the world is, you're basically there. Most of it appeared to be about Freemasonry, but okay. Look at the greatest attacks that have happened that has destroyed our culture. It has been removing the fathers from the home. It has been abortion. It has been contraception. I didn't... <laughs> Condoms! Really believe it. Goddamn Nuva Ring. I knew you were the work of Satan. Until I started looking at it, but how contraception destroys sexuality and families i could go into it <laughs> i don't know about you guys but contraception is great and i would definitely in my life have had a lot less sex if i was constantly worried about pregnancy right now but i won't because there are a bunch of other things abortion is rampant look at the lgbtq confusion it's not confusion, Elliot, just because you don't understand it. That they're pouring into our children's brains. You know what that's about? It's about destroying the family by destroying sexuality so that children don't make babies anymore. When a boy cuts... Children shouldn't make babies. They're children. <laughs> what? ...his penis off and starts taking hormones or vice versa, they're sterile. Elliot, they don't typically do that to children usually they put them on puberty blockers which is great until they can make the decision when they're 16 or 18. what do you think these vaccinations and bill gates talking about controlling population through them is about has elliot hulse gone down the conspiracy theory rabbit hole 
sterilization. What do you think about, what do you think plummeting testosterone levels and pesticides and birth control pills in our piss is all about? Sterilization. What do you think about, what do you think this whole quote unquote green movement sustainable bullshit is about? About trying to sustain the environment that we live in so we don't all die? Yeah, this is accidentally tinfoil Tuesday. <laughs> I didn't think he was gonna do this. It's about depopulation. We're not really doing bingo for the record. <laughs> I'm just joking, but. How do you depopulate the planet? Destroy the family, destroy, and how you destroy the family? Destroy sexuality. Feminism, radical feminism. Divorce rape. This is just, he's just listing off buzzwords that right-wingers don't like. <laughs> destroy marriage. Mar Nobody's getting married anymore, and I don't blame- No, I mean, marriage rights might be down, but that's fine. More people could get married than ever because of Obergefell v. Hodges, so what's your problem? Nobody's getting married anymore because it's been destroyed by the courts. <laughs> oh no, is he gonna say that because gay marriage is legal, marriage has been destroyed, even though all it does is make it so more people can get married? So, I know you're asking me, you know, whether you should get married, you should get married or not. Uh, I do. I do. I believe it's better for the family, for their children, when a mother and a father have a agreement have a lifelong commitment to one another. Lifelong, forever. I know in our YOLO world, we can't handle the idea. We think that there's something, they think that there's something oppressive. YOLO not, world, is it 2014 already? Not only women, you know, the feminism got to where it was by saying that women are oppressed by marriage, but even men, we're so effeminate now that we're like, marriage is oppressive to us because but what about all the other pussy I want to go get? What Fellas, is it gay to want to sleep with women? <laughs> what about all the other girls? So I'm oppressed by my marriage. Real effeminate, real weak. <laughs> We've been destroyed. We've been destroyed. And there's only going to be a remnant left. Hopefully, you and your wife and your family and the men that are in this program, you can make it work. And you'll be a part of that remnant. Because the world cannot repopulate itself after the devastation that we're going to experience in the next 10 years. If there aren't good, healthy, wholesome families, we need families, man. So that's my, that's my ideas on that, man. Don't let the lords of this world confuse you, lie to you, destroy you, turn you away from what's right and what's good, infiltrate the home, confuse your children, destroy your physiology, lie to you about overpopulation, lie to your women about oppression and how it is better to be a career woman than to be a mother i think typically the the cultural narrative is if you want to have a career and you're a woman that's great and you should pursue that and if you don't you don't have to that's the point is that people have the freedom to decide what they want to do with their lives and not impose some sort of cultural norm onto them in regard to that that's the whole point there's nothing better than being a mother. Nothing a woman could do better than being a great mother. Yikes. <laughs> Look, being a parent's great. And if that's something that you do, that's wonderful. But like, there are tons of things you can do in your life. For one person, being a parent can be like the best thing they can do if that's what makes them happy and that's what fulfills them. But there are plenty of other people who don't want that and they can be fulfilled and reach like self-actualization through other means. Careers, businesses, uh, hobbies, art, whatever it happens to be, it's all fine. There isn't a one-size-fit-all destiny for everyone. We're all individuals. 
It's good for people to be able to go out and find what fulfills them and makes them happy. Stop trying to put people in these little boxes. It makes everyone miserable. What? I'm a misogynist for saying that. Yeah. Yep. Unironically. Yes. Right? Ideological subversion. Soft totalitarianism. We're, we're there. <laughs> People telling me I'm wrong is soft totalitarianism. <laughs> <laughs> totally brainwashed. Sick, sad, degenerate population. But, um, but I acknowledge you, my man, and... Uh, I hope things work out. I really pr I pray that things work out for you guys. You know what? If it's going to work, things are going to work out with marriage and things are going to work out with family and things are going to work out in a society, we have to return to the father. They knew, the cultural Marxists understand that in order By the to way, cultural Marxism is a, literally an ideological rip, and I'm not trying to Godwin's law here. It's just legitimately a, an interesting thing. Cultural Marxism is literally something the Nazis made up. They called it cultural Bolshevism. Same thing. <laughs> it's just a way of trying to cast progressives as communist degenerates. The Nazis literally did this shit. And yes, they used it as a code word for Jewish people. So, if you find yourself... Repeating rhetoric the Nazis had, maybe get new rhetoric? To destroy the society, it's all about destroying the father, the primordial pattern of the culture. Sorry, yeah, they also called it Judeo-Bolshevism. My bad. That means you make them atheists and sexual deviants. It's fine if people want to be religious, but it's also great if people want to be non-religious. If people want to be LGBT, because that's what they are, it's not something you choose to be, it's something that you are, and if you want to be open about that, that's fantastic. Elliot, you're a straight cis man, and that's wonderful and I'm happy for you, but trying to push that onto other people if that doesn't make them comfortable isn't okay. If people are trans or gay or lesbian or pan or bi or whatever, that's their business. It's fine. Elliot... Have you ever met a femboy? Maybe go meet a femboy. I don't know. <laughs> when you get God and the Father, when you destroy religion and sexuality, society's done. That civilization is done. It's only a matter of time. And people think sexual deviance is uh, liberation, but it's nothing but domination. Look up E. Michael Jones, Libido, libido Dominandi. The best way, the way you start controlling the population is you make them sexual degenerates. They think they're free, but now they're slaves of their sexual desire. And that's where we are. We're a bunch of atheist sexual degenerates in a declining society. Done. <laughs> Yo, it's your bro, Elliot Hulls here. And I hope- Good Lord, Elliot. Good effing Lord. <laughs> <sighs> well, There's nothing funny about I'm weirdly glad capital. Elliot's back, so... Yeah. Well, we'll be seeing more of him. He's falling down a conspiracy theory rabbit hole, it seems, which is interesting. I didn't expect that, but I guess we'll see where he goes from here moving forward. Anyway. Let's do bits messages. Uh, Crispy Crunch, thank you for following. Tucker White 94 with 20 bits. I feel like I just stumbled into a wormhole back into 2016 YouTube at the height of. Uh, no, party read that one. Sorry. Killjoy 102 says there might be a correlation between marriage and children's outcomes, but it's more of a correlation for marriage and higher socioeconomic status. See a corner with 20 bits. There's actually evidence, but it has more to do with the poverty rate that is common for single parents, especially single mothers of color. Bent doorknob. Thank you for following Net Lord Necro Jay Z with 20 bits. Don't come at me and my family of rescue cars. Tucker White 94 with 20 bits. Hell, there's more credibility to someone saying Muhammad came to them because we have proof that Muhammad actually existed. Marcus Drake with 50 bits. Some guy once told the Pope or sold the Pope a public wig by claiming it was the beard of St. Peter. The Pope kissed it, so very easy. Lily loves stuff with 20 bits. Oh snap, I'm stream boss. Great, gaze upon my beautiful face, peasants. Frog extraordinaire, thank you for following. 
dude spanking dudes with 20 bits. Okay, I know this is off topic, but I'm playing Skyrim. I got to the starting town. I went there with the Imperial, the only correct option, and I killed like half the people in the village. I reset though in the town since Imperial soldiers were trying to kill me and I'm not strong enough. <laughs> Um, Killjoy102 with 100 bits. Is it Tinfoil Tuesday? Feels like it, but no. Um, Tucker White. Yes, Hannah Reloaded. Marriage rates have fallen in the U.S., but it's because of economics. That's not that surprising. Um, Jekka Marie, 81. Thank you for following. Killjoy102. Uh, depopulate. There's 8 billion people on Earth. Tucker White, 94. Tate, the world is overpopulated. There's too many people. Um, Stephen J. Neptune Man is 20 bits. I can say random words too. Elliot, chair, bug, waffle, telescope, micro machines. <laughs> micro machine man. Ambiguous Samus, thank you for resubscribing with a seven month streak. Says thanks for all the great content, Hannah. Love your streams. Of course. Tucker White 94 with 20 bits. Jesus Christ. This is the shit that Jerry Falwell and Pat Robertson were saying back in the 2000s. There's nothing original with Tate. He's nothing but a derivative conservative. <laughs> Dummy, let's say. Yeah. Marcus Drake with 50 bits just clarifying that wasn't a typo. It was a pubic wig, which is apparently a thing. They're called Merkins. They're called Merkins. Hmm. Okay. What shall we do next? Let's do a quick cleanse. Oh, bunny! <laughs> Poor bunny. There's nothing funny about the tools of capitalism. Cute. Uh, squid, ad squid, squid, adier. Thank you for subscribing with Prime. <sighs> okay, so our favorite MGTOW chud. I, he, honestly, he's not even really like officially MGTOW. He's just like really misogynistic. So I put him in this group. Andrew Tate, uh, former kickboxer, former uh, reality TV star, has a YouTube channel. And now he has beef with Leon Lush, I guess. This is a 50 minute video. There's like 0% chance we're going to get through this whole thing but I do kind of want to see how Tate reacts to criticism. So let's take a look. Right. Something terrible has happened. I want all of you to know, and I want all of you to understand something. I live a very good life. I am a multimillionaire. I'm a retired professional athlete. I have 16 supercars. I live in this big ass mansion. I live in- Supercars that he leases, for the record. <laughs> He only has, and I say only, I wish I only had six million dollars, but he has like six supercars that cost like half a million dollars each, anywhere between like a hundred to five hundred thousand dollars. I think the most expensive I've seen is like a half a million dollar one. And if his net worth is six million dollars, zero chance he owns those cars. He's got to be leasing them. <laughs> so I do find it funny that he's stretching himself further than he can. I don't know. Just find it interesting. In Romania, where I have political connections, I'm above the law. I can speed in fast cars. I can, I can do whatever I want. Admitting that you're bribing politicians and cops isn't the flex you think it is. I'm Steven Seagal. I'm above the law. I live a very good life. The only reason I have a- If you find yourself comparing yourself to Steven Seagal as a positive, please reconsider and please watch better movies. YouTube channel at all is to educate some of you, because as you know, many of you are in my programs and you're learning lots of things about life and you're making lots of money. Now, let me tell you something that happens when you are a brilliant individual. You attract hate. That's what happens, right? And hate is fantastic because there's no such thing as bad press. I understand. Like the My Pillow guy, he's doing so good right now. It's also really good to go on the internet and admit that you bribe corrupt officials in the country you live. That's always a good move. And that the way I project myself and the way I act online is going to attribute hate from lesser individuals because hate never comes from above. It always comes from lessers. Remember this. 
but sometimes some of the hate's worth replying to. So I did one for your mama's house, I replied to them. So this bitch, sorry, I don't wanna get banned. This female is the cheating one. The one who was on that 70s show is sucking dick. They were kind of cool in the end. <laughs> but now some new little girls come along, some little fat girl, and she's making videos about me. I think this is the second one the fat girl's done. And people keep saying, Tate, Tate, do a reply to the girl, do a reply to the fat girl. I don't normally talk to fat chicks. They've got to be pretty, you know, I only talk to attractive women. Is he talking about me? Because if he's talking about me, hi Tate, how are you doing? <laughs> but this little fat girl's made a video about me, so I'm going to do a reply video. So that's no, this, he's talking Buckle about up. Leon Lush, who is Big not Daddy a girl. Tate is going to waste to 20 my minutes of his fantastic life talking about this little fat girl and her uninteresting opinions. Even... With yeah, no, they're talking patient. about this person. I still look up to one man, Andrew Tate. Oops. I've been sent the video. I accidentally clicked the wrong button. Sorry. Oh, I've skipped through. I haven't watched it in its entirety, so I'm not entirely sure what's going to be said. But from the few seconds I've watched, there's something very interesting I discovered. And as you watch this video, it's going to become very apparent to you. This girl and her little boyfriend, which jumps in later, they live the internet. And when I say live the internet, what I mean is, if my YouTube channel got deleted today, I would still be a six foot four multimillionaire, retired world champion athlete. I would. St right, but you wouldn't be making nearly as much money because this channel is just an advertising effort to try and get non confident, insecure men to come to your website and pay you for useless advice. <laughs> so I think you'd be doing pretty badly, but you know, you do you. Still be the kind of man everyone wants to be. If these guys- Again, Tate, no, most people don't want to be like you because you live a vapid, empty life where you use material possessions and faux machismo to try and make it look like you're happy when you're clearly not. These things aren't good. It'd be great to have six million dollars. I'd take it. But I would never live the kind of life you live because it's pathetic guys lost their YouTube channels, they'd have nothing. There's nothing aspirational about them. No man wants to be them. No woman wants to fuck them. There's Let me look at, hold on. Uh, Leon Lush. Is this the person he's talking about? But it doesn't look like the person he's talking about. Right? Is there multiple Leon Lushes? No, okay. This guy's also in it, so maybe he just has a friend on. Let's take a look at Social Blade for Leon Lush. Leon Lush. Mr. GG, okay. Let's look at Leon Lush, okay. So, Leon Lush, according to... Social Blade, which can be, it has a huge, you know, margin of error, is making between fourteen and $233,000 a year, which is pretty darn good. Who's the other guy? Mr. GG. And this guy's making, oh, he's got to make more than that. That's crazy. Either way. My point is, like, these people, this is their job. So, yeah, if they lost their YouTube, it would probably suck a lot for them because it's their career. There's nothing. Nobody looks at them and goes, wow, never. Their whole life is based around the fact that they've managed to amass followers on a YouTube channel. So that's going to become an important point we're going to come back to because that's what the world's really about, right? YouTube's supposed to be a reflection of who you are. And you have a lot... What? YouTube is a service to put videos what do you mean it's a reflection of who you are a lot of people on youtube who are very big but there's nothing interesting or aspirational about them as a person right and the reason i get hate is because my youtube channel's small so why do they come for me well the reason they come for a small because you're a misogynistic asshole <laughs> they come for you because you're a lol cow channel like mine is because they know outside of youtube I'm the kind of guy they wish they were. I'm everything they wish they were. 
But we'll get into that later. So let's start with what the little chick has to say. And with that, the audience will judge you at every turn. They'll dissect your personality. They'll examine your traits. And then they will label you with the results. So for example, if you go to my comments. Since we're looking at social play, let's look at Tate's real quick. Just curious. So Tate's making between $800 and $13,000 a year. Um, and his YouTube channel has 32,000 subscribers. <laughs> um, ooh, I'm getting more subscribers per month at this point than Tate speech. Good job. Yay me. <laughs> You'll often see people refer to me as handsome, innovative, capable of growing a beard that definitely isn't reminiscent of a patchy catfish, an alpha. But even with that reputation, I still look up to one man, Andrew Tate. Okay, well, you know, it's good to have female fans as usual. So let's, let's see. It's good that he looks up to me. Is Tate's one joke in this gonna be that he's gonna misgender this person? Oh boy, Tate. You have enough money to hire an editor, hire a writer, Jesus Christ. He should. There's a lot about the world I could teach him. I've talked about this man in the past and he still confuses me to this day. He's such a draw because you want to hear the bad shit things he's going to say. And even crazier, you find yourself randomly agreeing with him. Like, oh fuck, is he right about everything? Yes, I am. I, now, you know what? Now I'm going to say, now I'm going to take it back. I apologize for calling you a girl. I'm sorry. I was going to call you a little fat girl the whole way through, and I shouldn't do that. You're a little fat boy, and I apologize for calling you a girl. You're a little fat boy, and I am right about everything. And I know I look like the kind of guy who used to pick on you in high school, and that's why you're upset, because I'm, you know, I'm the archetype of the guy who used to bully you. But don't be afraid, my friend. It's so satisfying to me listening to Tate do this and clearly be super mad that someone who... Tate clearly doesn't have respect for this Mr. GG guy or Leon Lush because I imagine he looks at Mr. GG and even though Mr. GG appears to be a completely normal person with a good sense of humor, successful on YouTube, they're probably a decent person. I've never really watched their content. Tate looks at that person and it's the kind of person Tate looks down to because Tate has a antiquated sort of traditional idea of masculinity of I need to be fucking bitches, I need to be going to the gym, I need to be six foot five, I need to be, like, you know what I mean? Driving supercars. And then you have someone with, like, like Tate's whole thing is a front. Tate's whole thing is a persona he's putting on to hide his insecurity and pretending to be something he's not. Whereas someone like Mr. GG, at least from that short clip I saw, is the kind of person who's pretty good with self-deprecating humor, someone who can look at themselves and laugh, you know, someone with actual confidence. And I think that bothers Tate on a visceral level that someone Tate views as a lesser is insulting him. I think it legitimately pisses him off in a way that's indescribable for him. I think it makes him incredibly frustrated and makes him feel impotent in that he can't accurately, like, respond to the things that they're about to say about him. Because I'd imagine everything they're going to say is real. Tate is pathetic. Tate is insecure. Tate is overcompensating. Tate is a misogynistic asshole. These are all things that are true about Tate. And he's going to get called out, I'd imagine, on all of this. And he has no way to respond because it's all true. <laughs> I can teach you many things about the world. I'm a beacon of knowledge. Do you understand that I've lived a life you could never possibly live? You could never have 75 cam girls in your house making you money, making you a multimillionaire. Like, this is what he has to do. He can't rebut the fact that he's pathetic. So he has to assert that the things that make him pathetic and a gross person aren't in fact pathetic and gross. They have to be positives. He has to say, oh, you want to be exploiting a bunch of women who live in your house and do only fans and give you part of the money, even though that's disgusting and exploitative. He has to insist that these terrible things he does are good things because it's all he has. Boxing world champion. You could never have been to Iraq, Baghdad, or Kishinev, Moldova. You could never have been arrested by Russian special forces. Problem is, on that overnight train, I nearly got robbed. That train is completely mafia run. So like, how the fuck do we get out? All the planes are booked another week. We don't want to take the train again, because of what happened the first time. It's a war zone. It's a fucking war. We're chilling. 
I see someone outside the car. Blacked out. Tate Head is a pimp. Black. Tate has a business venture where he basically has like a, a warehouse that he houses and takes care of, feeds, I imagine, and provides housing for a bunch of women that he then has go on OnlyFans and do OnlyFans stuff as their job, and then he takes a cut of it. So basically he's a pimp. Yes, he's a digital pimp. Yeah. Get out the car, get out the car. We need Tristan look at each other like, for fuck's sake. Like, we should have known better. Shit's about to go down. We just got the car with our hands off. They got guns pointed at us. We're like, yeah, well, what, who the fuck are you? Like, this is more than just a routine robbery. They even had our Mr. Fucking Rally Driver at gunpoint. You could never have done any of the things I've talked about in this channel. I live for you so that I can learn lessons to teach you. People like me, basically Jesus Christ, are beacons for lesser individuals like you so you can- As we all know, Jesus said, and thou shalt exploit Eastern European women um, and make money off their backs, even though you provide no actual good or service to the world. Amen. Learn via my experience. So of course I'm right about everything. Of course I am. You're a little fat boy. You can't be Tate. So pay attention. The gayest thing you can do is buy pictures of a chick's tits. Andrew Tate is bull- <laughs> Tate, that's part of your business model, is selling people pictures of other women's uh, scantily clad body parts. Oh, by the way, and that's because he stopped caring about his hair. My prediction, however, is that he started to experience some form of male pattern baldness. And that's because he didn't have keeps, today's sponsor. I've refused to get a haircut <laughs> out of the fear that I will lose these luscious ah, locks. So he's selling a product here. Well, you can see here, you can see the pattern of my hair. And I shaved my hair off. Actually, it's quite an interesting story about why I shaved my hair off. I shaved my hair off, I put this on Twitter, because it's a long story, I'll keep it short, but when I was young, my father said I should shave my hair off because he said, when you're a full-grown man, nobody cares what your hair looks like. They're gonna care about the quality of man you are as an individual. They don't care what your hair looks like, they care if you're big and strong and rich and successful and interesting and charming and smart. So you don't need hair. Any man who really thinks they need hair to be attractive to females or to matter in the real world has no substance. Nobody. Do you not understand that people can just like want hair to have a certain hairstyle? It doesn't need to be to attract people or whatever. You can just want hair. What? <laughs> Looks at Tate and goes, ah, he's pushing a Lamborghini. He makes 10 or $15 million a year. He's strong, he's a retired kickboxing world champion, his father was a chess master, all these beautiful women love him. You definitely don't make 10 to 15 million dollars a year because I looked at your video the other day. This is fun. Remember we looked up his net worth and it was like six million dollars or something? And I was like, I don't know if that's accurate. Hold on, let's see this. At some point in this ad, he, he, he says six million dollars or it says six million dollars. Let me see if I can find it. 15 car collection, worth $6 million and still growing. See what I'm saying? His net worth is only $6 million. So zero chance he's making 10 to $15 million a year. Even here, he's admitting he's only worth $6 million. While also claiming he has 15 supercars, which are presumably part of that net worth. So, <laughs> unless he's leasing them again, in which case... He's just overextending his wealth beyond what he should be having as a way to try and market his shitty business to get insecure men to come and try and learn to make money on cryptocurrency or being a pimp or whatever he tells them to do. <sighs> ah, but don't like his haircut. Nobody thinks that. Because as a man, your value is not derived from how you look. Your value is derived from your competency. How competent are you as a man? Which is why you spent the first five minutes of this video insulting that other YouTuber's looks. Consistent. James Bond can change his haircut. He's still James Bond. This individual thinks hair is important because, like we've already discussed, there is nothing aspirational about him. There's nothing about him anyone wants to be. So he's going to go down to infantile, pathetic little indicators of importance, such as a haircut. These luscious locks forever. That's because two out of three lads experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time. So now he's selling us. Do you know that? I did. Your entire YouTube channel is a big ad for your website, Tate. Seriously, you're gonna make fun of someone else's ad read? 
for no specific reason. Now he's selling his product. Let's get through this. Skip. Boring. Look at these pictures. I see satisfactory results. And don't worry, I've already asked. They don't do anything for facial hair. So if you are ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash MrGG or click the link in the description to receive 50% off of your first order. That's keeps.com slash MrGG. And thank you, Keeps, for sponsoring this video. I wanted to revisit his content, but if I am going to do that, I'm gonna need a lot more testosterone on my side if I wanna make it out alive. So ladies and gentlemen, please give a run. Well, we agree on that, friend. Um... Certainly. I mean, I don't know if you've ever had your testosterone levels checked. In fact, I had my testosterone levels checked about a month ago because everyone was saying, Tate, how old are you now? I'm 34. And they said, your testosterone levels start to drop. And you can see here a picture of my test. And you can see from... <laughs> I'm a real man, bro. Just look at my, my T count. I got it tested because I'm definitely not insecure about the way I feel. Look at my testosterone test. <laughs> from the test that I've never taken a steroid in my life. I love Tate so much. And understands testosterone tests will be able to see here. I've never taken a steroid in my life. And my free testosterone level is double the average high amount found in the average male. So basically, God's blessed me. <laughs> like I, I power runs through my veins. I have fire blood. I was just given heaps of testosterone for basically no reason other than to live this fantastic life to educate you all. I'm Superman, genetically. I'm biologically wired, hormonally wired to be better than you. And especially better than this. Is he still a girl or is he a boy? I haven't decided. He's on, he's on the fence. Okay, we're, 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 we're repeating jokes. We're only nine minutes into this 50 minute video, Tate. You can't be repeating the same joke five times. It was old after the second time you said it. And it was an old joke the first time you said it. Just calling someone by the wrong, like, gender? That's not really cutting edge humor in 2021. Gentlemen, please give a round of applause to our very special guest. He is a fellow YouTuber, musician, father, sweaty Rocket League player, winner of the Mr. Beast Circle Challenge, Leon Lush. Never heard of her. Oh, it's the same joke again. Do we need to start a counter on how many times he just does the same joke? Let me get a notebook. Hold on. We'll see how, how many times he does the joke. What are we at right now? At least four. Did anyone count any more than that? You think five? We'll start with five, okay? One. Oh, come on. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. Is this a boy or a girl? Let's go, baby. Oh, it's the Happy same. Oh God, here. that was there was no no reload time. Number six. <laughs> Thanks for having me on, Mr. GG. Hey, I appreciate you coming on, Leon Lush. Yeah, I appreciate man. that. Okay. So. I mean, I'm not homophobic in any way, but. If you gotta say but. I said the gayest thing that ever existed was buying a picture of a girl's tits. I'm gonna change that. The gayest thing that's ever existed is these two on a YouTube video. <laughs> Tate's best comeback is, uh, you gay, bro. Have you considered you gay, bro? <laughs> Fellas, is it gay to like titties? So, we have a playlist of Andrew Tate videos here. I'ma yeah, let you do. choose your fate. I want, I want, I want to see what you, what you get drawn towards. All right, for pretext now. Mo Honestly, at this point, remember that time we went over Tate's poems, and I was actually like, oh, these are like competent poems. They're not expert level professional poems, but like, like a good high schooler or a moderate, you know, college student could, could, could write these. Great. At this point, based on the fact that he's using the same joke multiple times makes me think he paid someone to write those poems. Because those poems actually had clever lines in them, and yet this is what, what Tate is stooping to in terms of insults. I'm thinking he maybe paid someone to write those poems for him.
you and I have both done a little bit on Andrew Tate because he is kind of uh, a bit infamous, I guess, in the in the commentary community. A little, you know, a little bit of misogyny, some hedonism, just, uh, a just a tad. I don't know if you saw this, but since I last did my video, there was some pretty, some more damning evidence came out about him and as far as how he treats women, like pretty bad, <laughs> pretty bad. How does, wait, how does someone whose content is this level <laughs> like get canceled <laughs> on other stuff so that's andrew tate in a nutshell basically hates women or thinks they're objects and thinks he's basically god he has a lot of wisdom that's why he makes big but you know what this is actually quite a common criticism hating women women made me a multimillionaire. i have a whole bunch of beautiful women who adore me i don't hate women because i have opinions on women <laughs> You hate women because you hate women. I've heard you talk about women, Tate, saying, I can't hate women, I make money off women, is like the dumbest point ever. Like, imagine if, if I'm Thomas Jefferson and I go, I don't hate black people, I made a ton of money with my slaves. Like, what? That's not how this works. You have no respect for women. You've said this multiple times. You think the only time a woman should open her mouth if your dick is going in it, okay? You're, you're, you're a, you're a misogynistic piece of shit. We know this. <sighs> it's very often for bait. He's talked about beating women before, about beating people he's been with. And lesser men like these guys with low testosterone levels. If you have an opinion on females, you hate them. So my view. Uh, if your opinion is that women are shit, then yeah, you hate them. My view is very simple. I believe that men are better at some things and women are better at some things. If a man breaks into this house, I'm not going to send my woman to fight. I'm going to go fight because I believe that's my job. So do I see the women as inferior? Well, I do see the woman as inferior in regards to physical combat. Of course she is. So I'm going to go and You've fight. also said you think women are stupider than men and that you don't want to talk to them. So what do you think women are good at? These dudes... Oh no, we're, we're equal, women are my equal. You go check if someone broke in the house. That's the kind of men they are. And, and, they, and that's why me having an opinion on females, me saying, look, I'm better than women at some things, offends them because- That's not what he said. He's very much trying to <laughs> mitigate all the awful, terrible things he's said about women before. He's just gaslighting. He has said awful things about women and we've seen them on this channel many times. They see females as their equal. In fact, and I would know this from running a cam studio for many, many years. Anyone who's watching this doesn't know, I have a webcam studio, women work for me online. These guys look- He's a pimp. Exactly like customers. These guys are the kind of guys who idolize females. They look at women in their, because they don't get any women, right? So they're completely, to them, women are goddesses. So that's why they take offense when a man like me don't, doesn't see women as goddesses. I think they're, they're humans and I think- they're the, You understand that there's a middle ground between like putting a, a specific gender up on a pedestal and thinking that they're better than everyone else and saying, I think all women are shit and that it's okay to beat women. The middle ground would be, regardless of your gender, you're a human being and you should be treated with dignity and respect. And don't just say, oh, I just say women, I just say women are di better at different things. I've never heard you say women are good at anything except for sexual acts. That's the only time I've ever heard you say something positive about a woman is if you've like complimented them on doing something to you sexually. It's super gross. They're good at some things. I think they're bad at some things. That only offends these men because they pet, they idolize females. They put them on a pedestal. They see females. Yeah, they should be like Tate and hit women for reasons. Females is above them. And that's down to their innate lack of masculinity and their innate lack of admirable attributes there's nothing about these men which is admirable so of course they see women as their superiors that's why he yes. makes videos on everything <laughs> again superiors they said nothing about superiors tate they see women as equals to them because women are has no boundaries you'll talk about whatever the fuck he wants to talk about uh like spider-man 2021 <laughs> review perhaps oh he's got the whole yeah Part of Brutal me, review. Part of me wants to believe that he put in that edit himself. Sorry, so edit myself. This is we're gonna go back to that me talking about how these guys live on YouTube. These guys make their own videos, they edit their own videos. I work with a at their level, they probably have editors. I would guess. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they enjoy doing the editors, but when you have like a million subscribers like Leon Lush has, you tend to have an editor just for simplicity's sake. You're making enough money that you can. 
makes it easier for you to just put content out without having to deal with the monotony of editing. Um, I'd probably do that if I made a ton of money, but I don't. Um, but who knows? Maybe they do do their own videos. Either way, it would be fine if they did. It's their job. Very capable cameraman. He's watching me right now as I speak. He, he films for me. He edits for me. I live a good life. You think I've got time to edit videos? I've got a guy who's like an expert who does that shit for me. I'm not a nerd like these two whose whole life is based on their follower accounts. If they lost their follower accounts, you could walk past these dudes on the street and you know what would happen? You wouldn't even notice them. People walk past me and they're like, mm, they're either intimidated or they remember me. You walk past these guys, they're just NPCs, characters in the matrix, not ready to be unplugged, <laughs> idolizing women, sitting around laughing at themselves because they can't grow a beard. This, I mean, would you want to be that man? This is a genuine question. Imagine I would love to be able to not grow a beard. I'm going to electrolysis every week to get to that point. Thanks for asking, Tate. You're in the sky. You're in the clouds above. And God says, I'm about to make you born and you're going to live 80 human years. And your choice is you can either be born as Andrew Tate or you can be born as Mr. GG or you can be born as Lush. Oh, definitely either Mr. GG or uh, 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 Leon Lush. I'd prefer it to be like if I have another option, like a, whim a woman, that would be excellent. I'm already trying to deal with my transition and stuff. But if I have to pick between those three, I would never in a million years pick Tate. Tate seems miserable. Tate's entire life is a front. Tate's entire life is overcompensating and projecting. It sounds terrible. <laughs> Lush is a sex toy for cam girls, by the way. So you chose a good name. Genuinely. So you're up in the sky. You're a spirit. You're going to be put in Andrew Tate's body and live his Wait, existence. is your insult to him that he has the same name as a sex toy for women? I don't think that's the burn you think it is. You're going to live the existence of Mr. Gigi, a little fat boy who makes videos on YouTube, or Lush, a sex toy. Who would you like to be? I don't know. Who has more subscribers, Mr. Gigi or Leon Lush? Which other one has more subscribers? <laughs> There's not a single person alive who would choose to be either of those two individuals over me. Uh, me. Checkmate. And this is, this is true. Let's imagine it's like, it's like Sims and you're going to build your Here, we'll, we'll do a poll real quick in chat. Poll. Okay, here's a poll. Would you rather be Tate or would you rather be either Leon Lush or Mr. GG? Let, let's see how this poll goes. <laughs> hmm. Let's see. So far, our poll seems rigged because so far, Tate has one vote. And Leon, Mr. GG, has 92 votes. So, how's that going? <laughs> Tate's in the audience? I guess so. <laughs> oh god, I should have set this poll for a shorter period. Now we just gotta bullshit until it's done. Tate and bot. No, that's Tate's editor. It's Tate and Tate's editor. Don't you know? Okay. So, so far, we are at 98% Leon slash Mr. GG and 2% Tate. Two votes for Tate, 118 for the other guys. Tucker White says I voted Tate to be contrarian. <laughs> There's always a couple people who do that. <sighs> Headphones are all tangled. There we go. Got it. Tate got charity votes. Yeah, it happens. It's almost over. Doesn't look like many new votes are coming in, but let's see. So Leon and Mr. GG got 98% of the vote with 126 votes, and Tate got 2% of the votes with 3 votes. So how'd that work out for you, Tate?
Looks like a lot of people don't want to be you because they see through your facade and recognize that you are miserable. Character. Because my character is based on hard work, right? You have to work your ass off. It's hard work to exploit Eastern European women and use their bodies to make me money. To become Asshole. extremely, you have to work extremely hard to become a kickboxer world champion. You need to be brave. You need to train every single day. Then you got to make a whole bunch of money. Then women have to admire you, which means you have to be charismatic and smart and worthy of respect. All these things I've done, I've worked for. These men are extremely lazy. Their only idea of work is making YouTube videos. That's why they're not admirable. So your idea of work is kicking people in the face, which is fine, by the way. That is work. If I needed an expert on kickboxing, Tate would be a fine person to ask. I'm sure Tate knows how to kickbox. I'm sure he knows how to train. Clearly, he takes care of himself physically. But like the fact that he does that for a living or did that for a living, but feels the need to make fun of people who are making YouTube videos is hilarious. Like Tate. Your job was kicking people in the face. Do you think that's productive? No, it's entertainment. It's sports. And YouTube is entertainment. They're both fine. If you were to say, look, you can, here's your character. You can create your person from thin air without work required. Do you want to be Andrew Tate, a six foot four kickboxing world champion multimillionaire? Or do you want to be this short fat guy who can't grow a beard? Short fat guy. Especially because can't grow a beard. Or the little sex toy one. No one wants to be them. If they had the choice, if they were spirits in the sky and could jump into a body, they'd choose me. Of course they would. No, again, Tate, your life is sad. We all see it as sad. I'd choose me. Anyone here being honest would choose me. No one wants to be these men. So when I said at the beginning that their entire lives are based around their YouTube channels, they're proving that to be true. When I said at the beginning that hate never comes from above, it always comes from below, that's glaringly obvious. I mean, if these men could do any of the things I've done, they'd do them, but they can't. Yeah, Spider-Man's no. a pussy. <laughs> I, I Wait, what did he start with? How this he just, Sp Spider-Man's a pussy. Right he now. is. Spider-Man is a pussy. What's wrong about that video? Spider-Man's a pussy. <laughs> call it a brutal review and, and not call Spider-Man a pussy in the first sentence. Agreed. That's fair. That's fair. I was talking about how all superhero movies are stupid and it's all bullshit, but the worst of them all is Spider-Man. Spider-Man is- I mean, let me just- I mean- I reviewed that video too. It's on my YouTube channel if you want to check it out. Basically, Andrew Tate is upset that Spider-Man has real world problems and he has emotions and he thinks he's a weakling for that, even though that's specifically why Spider-Man became so popular. Spider-Man became popular because he wasn't Superman, who was just perfect all the time and always great. He was Peter Parker, who was a mess and had tons of problems, and people found that relatable. That's what made Spider-Man successful. I mean, they're superhero movies. Of course they're bullshit. I don't know. <laughs> we're talking about real life. We're talking about a real life man that's a spider. I think what's going to bother him is that he holds himself up in such high regard that anything that challenges that, even in fiction, he just fucking hates it. He's like, yes. nope. Can't achieve that. I've tried. That's Trust true. me. I'm very yeah. close. He was a dork who got bit by a spider. Now he's super spider dork. And he still can't get laid. By the way, uh, one thing about Andrew Tate is everything in the world that has value revolves around, like, uh, coming back to the home base of can you get laid with it or not. Yeah, so this is an interesting point. Everything in the world that has value comes back to the home base of can you get laid. Well, from a biological and from a historical perspective, own, the only men that reproduced were men of value, right? So if, if you look at humans from the dawn of time... How about from a happiness perspective, Tate? How are you doing? Do you feel fulfilled? Do you feel like your life is worth living? Or is it entirely based upon you achieving more and more material wealth and vapid, empty relationships with women who hate you? Which one? What's going on? How you doing? Only 10% of males reproduced. The majority of men died without ever reproducing, whereas nine. That's definitely untrue. <laughs> Eighty-nine percent of females reproduce. So the point being that, yeah, if you're a high-value man that's achieved things of value, it's going to make you be perceived by females as a, as a better mate. It doesn't matter if you make more money. It doesn't matter if you train and get a better body. It doesn't matter if you become more important. All these things are seen as admirable. They're all seen as something that a female wants in their partner. 
So when I link things back to getting laid, what I'm effectively doing is I'm going down to the baseline of humanity, the lowest common denominator, right? These dudes clearly struggle with women. As we all know, the bottom tier of Maslow's hierarchy of needs is, does it get your dick sucked? I know they said lush to sex toys married to a four. So, I mean, she, he's married to the kind of girl I reject. So of course, if he finds it offensive when I mention that, yeah, sex is important and your value as a man to some degree will always be derived by how many females want you. Jesus Christ. This expl his mentality, this speech explains so much about why he prioritizes what he does. This is so sad. Females wanting you is a good indicator of value as a man. Just as, as a woman, your value is derived from men wanting you. Look at all these- No, Tate, Tate, I, I think you need to hear this. Tate, your value as a person does not have to come from the approval of others whether it's women in a, in a sexual context or anyone else in any other context, romantic, platonic, business, you are valid as a person regardless of these things. You don't need to perpetually end up in this cycle of seeking validation from women to be a whole person. And in fact, I think it's quite unhealthy of you to continually orient your goals toward that end without any sort of fulfillment involved outside of cooming, okay? It's not healthy. It's not good for you. And it ends up with you having pretty negative opinions on women, clearly, based on what we've heard you talk about before. So I would suggest you take some time, see a therapist, reorient in, in what you're valuing in terms of your day-to-day -day activities, and probably stop taking advantage of the sex workers that you are taking advantage of supermodels and all these Instagram models and all these women who are very beautiful, their value is derived from the fact that men want to be with them. And a man's value is derived from the fact that women want to be with him. Now, because no women on earth want to fuck these guys, they're going to pretend that isn't true. This is the thing with- Doesn't Leon Lush have kids? With about, about life. When you live a second-rate existence like these betas have to, you either have to accept very harsh truths or deny them. They could accept that I'm superior to them physically and mentally and, and financially, and they can accept that anyone would rather be me than them, and they can- It's untrue though. You're in better shape, you're wealthier, but you're definitely not more intelligent, and again, you're certainly not happier. Accept that no female alive- No one who takes themselves this seriously is happy. No one. It's gotta be so stressful every day. Just being this, oh God, I, I gotta, uh, I gotta sleep with women every day. I gotta make another million dollars. Uh. Chill out. Have a sense of humor about yourself, Tate. Jeez. Not a single one would choose them over me, including the wife of the sex toy. I mean, if I were to message her for five minutes, she'd leave him for me. Of course she would. <laughs> I would love to see Leon Lush's wife or whoever, I don't I guess I don't know if he's a, a, a straight guy or not. I, I would love to see Leon Lush's partner <laughs> laugh in Tate's face about that comment. But instead of accepting it, they'd rather deny the realities and they continue to live in a dream. And by denying the realities, it prevents them from changing themselves. If the little fat one accepted the reality, he'd go on a diet and he'd start to train. But he won't accept the reality, so he stays fat. So he'll sit and say, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, and he'll eat ice cream, because he lives in a dream. Uh, is he actually going to review the recent Spider-Man film, or is he just talking no. shit about Spider-Man? No, he just doesn't like Peter Parker, because he cried once in a scene. If I was Spider-Man, <laughs> you think that bitch wouldn't be sucking him fucking? <laughs> by hook or by crook? <laughs> if True. by some crazy twist of fate, some crazy twist of fate, she goes, no, I don't want to. I'd be like, psst, what the fuck are you talking about? No. So he'd rape her, is oh, what he's saying. No. Yeah. <laughs> that's just, that's so... It's so weird. I don't know why I still give him the benefit of the doubt in any type uh, yeah. of situation. I thought he was just going to spray Gosh. her in the face. Ha ha, run away. Fuck you. How are you going to get that web off? The thing that's crazy about this guy is he does have this kind of cult following of these young men who revere him as like this sort of god that doesn't care. They're kind of using his veracity and his tenacity towards life to fill that void. And it's not, it's giving them a really, like an incel view of what it means to be a man, I think. He's breeding. An incel view of what it means to be a man, I think. Says the guy married to a four, to a kickboxing world champion who runs a webcam studio full of beautiful women. Yes. Yes. 
Because you don't value women as human beings, you value them as objects to be conquered? That's literally what he's saying. If you don't see the irony there, and his friend, his little partner who's agreeing with him, is a virgin. Breeding more Andrew Tates around the world. And that's frightening. The man, basically, if you've watched any of his content, which you have, like, he thinks women are just worthless objects, basically. Only yes. there to please men. Not true at all. I think that men are better at some things and women are better at some things. Oh, come on. Tate, you liar. I've, we've seen your videos. They're still up online. I can see you talking about hitting women and thinking all they're good for is for, for, for pleasing men. The video about you, if it's like when you said like, oh, what if I had a daughter? I'd be disgusted because all she's good for is her pleasing a man. Like that video exists, Tate. I can go look at it right now. You know what, For for let, let's go, let's go. Real quick, real quick. In and out, five minute adventure. <laughs> Where's the video on him having a daughter? Hold on. Oh God, how am I gonna find it now? I know I've watched it. He was in like a, oh God, he was in a room. I think he was smoking a cigar, but that doesn't help because he's made a ton of those videos. Gosh darn it. Gotta find it. Where the heck is it? Brother sister relationships. That's not what I want. Worst type of friends to have. Maybe if I search sun, control F sun. Cause I know we talked about having a son and daughter in it. Hmm. Gosh dang it. Child? Maybe. Hmm. God damn it. Well, I can't find it now, so that sucks. We're gonna have to find it later, or if someone wants to find it for me... That'd be great, but I understand if you can't. <sighs> Either way, we've watched this video before, Tate, on you, like, hitting women and shit. How about this, Tate on women? You probably say some shitty things about women in this one. If you're gonna be on my YouTube channel, you need to understand that I live in the real world, and the real world is sexist. When I say that, people start freaking out, going, you hate women. I don't hate women. I just think men are better than women at certain things, and they happen to be the things that are extremely important for survival. Next time a woman gives you that strong, independent woman bullshit, you need to remind her that less than 200 years ago, without a man in her life, she would literally die. Men hunted. Men are stronger. We can run faster. We can swim further. We can fight. None of that was socially imposed, by the way. It's all entirely biological, and women certainly weren't being kept in place socially by men. There's a lot of things a man can do that a woman instinctively cannot do. And for a long period of human history, if a woman didn't have a man, she would literally die and starve to death. So women need men for survival. Men don't need women. Yeah, we like to fuck women, and we need women to have babies. But in general, a man can survive on its own. A woman can't. And if you look at the way the world is, this is why women are instinctively attracted to alphas or attracted to men with money or status because women know they need to be provided for and cared for. Any real woman who's going to not come at you with this new age feminist bullshit is going to agree with you. She's going to sit there and go, yeah, you're, you're actually right. Women need men far more than men need women. And that's because men are physically superior to females. And in the real world, you take away society, you go down to the very basic instincts of what being a human is, being physically superior is actually in most forms the only form of superiority that matters. Okay, you get what I'm saying. This is a lot of his videos. He has tons of videos like this. <laughs> he has videos on 
not caring about women, about sleeping with women and not caring about them. You know, all sorts of shit. He's a homophobe. He's a transphobe. He had a whole video where he's like, if I had a kid, I would, you know, if it was a woman, I wouldn't know how to deal with the kid because all they're good for is pleasing a man. It, it was There's a whole thing. Funny about the it was ridiculous. Capitalism. Yeah, and he's a rape apologist. He said he doesn't believe women ever get um, roofied. He says they just make it up. It's ridiculous. Anyway, back to his bullshit. He gets very offended. Let me look this guy's wife up. Let me show you his four wife. Leon Lush. Wife. Here we go. There. That's the guy. Okay, she's pretty. She's beautiful. He's handsome. What's the issue? who's giving you an opinion on women there let's be honest gentlemen i'm not trying to throw shade look i'm gonna try to insult the guy do you want his wife okay i'll show you my last five i don't know his wife what girls and let me ask you do you want his wife do you want his wife cameraman do you want his wife no no one wants his wife why is he talking about women the only woman you have is the woman nobody wants I don't want her. Nobody watching this video wants her. If you were me and you actually had choice, you wouldn't want her. So why are you talking about chicks? Tate is so sad. He doesn't understand anything about actual romantic relationships with like a partner. It's all about just wanting to bang for him. Does he understand like attraction and loving someone and caring about them? Does he think that no one has value if they aren't, like, an anorexic model? Like, what? Women, she, what is this? She looks like more of a dude than your boyfriend you're doing the video with. Unbelievable. Wow, he's really stretching now. <laughs> Crazy. Only yes. there to please men. I think one of the videos I watched, he was discussing women as a whole. And he was saying, well, it doesn't matter how much you try to instill into your daughters and stuff like that. They're still going to suck dick. I love the beginning. He was like, yeah, if I was Yeah, that's the video I was referencing where he said about having a daughter. I'd be sucking and fucking all day. Like, if he actually directed the movie, it would just be a porn, basically. <laughs> Some robber killed his uncle. Is this the right story? And now he decides he wants to stop crime to get the robber who killed his uncle. Does he even catch that robber ever? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely asking. Does it's in the first, it's in the first 20 minutes or something of the Sam Raimi movie, Tate. Do you even know what you're talking about? Does he catch the robber? I don't know. If you guys know about Spider-Man, tell me. So he's making a review about Spider-Man with knowing nothing about Spider-Man. Why the fuck would I watch Spider-Man? I'm a multi-millionaire. Then why did you make a review of Spider-Man, Tate? Then why did you make a review of Spider-Man? I'm a multi-millionaire. I fly on private jets and I drive Lamborghinis. You want- Okay, then when you're on your private jet, pull out your, your phone and watch Spider-Man or a tablet and watch Spider-Man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> he is Dennis Reynolds. He is the golden god. <laughs> Spider-Man so you can look away from your wife for a few seconds. If I was you, I would watch Spider-Man. I'd keep my eyes glued to the screen so I don't have to look at the ogre next. You think he deleted that video? That would track. Uh, but here is your video at the timestamp where he says it. Thank you. I'm glad I uh, uh, kept that somewhere. As my father did with me. If I have a daughter and I put a bunch of work in, what can I achieve? She's going to end up sucking dick. Oh, these videos are so frustrating. I agree past me. You're so right. To me. Of course you watch Spider-Man, bro. I got stuff to do. Jesus, you got an idiot. You know why he's a pussy? I'll tell you why he's a pussy. Both of them. If someone insulted my chick, I'd say, okay, here's a first class ticket. Let's throw down the cage. I'm going to insult his wife this whole way through his video. He won't show up and fight me. He won't do a single thing. <laughs> No, he could probably have your video taken down, though, which would be pretty funny. Another video back, crying about it. Oh, Andrew says that thinks my wife's ugly. Put a picture of your wife in the next video, bro. Let everyone make their own mind up. <laughs> I don't have to say anything. Put a picture of your own wife in your own video. Jesus, what failure. 
man. That's also you know, pretty on brand. This is something something small I really dislike about Andrew Tate because he's done this before. <laughs> he like plays stupid on so many things because yeah. he makes it seem like I can't be bothered to learn right. about this thing. That's absolutely true. I've never watched Spider Man and I can't be bothered. It's not playing. Then why did you make a review of Spider Man? No one's telling you, Tate. I think you're misunderstanding. No one is telling you you have to watch Spider Man. You don't have to watch Spider-Man. That's fine. No one's asking you to watch Spider-Man if you don't want to. We are asking, why did you make a review of Spider-Man if you've never seen Spider-Man and know nothing about Spider-Man? I'm so... <sighs> what is this Baja just sent? A right-wing hero was taunting the father of a sick child, but there's a happy ending. Oh, God. Tate? What is Tate doing? Andrew Tate is a professional kickboxer. He recently attained a degree of notoriety for his claims that depression isn't real. This notoriety gained him many supporters among the right, including figures like Paul Joseph Watson and conspiracy site Infowars. When was this? October 2017? But Tate's latest activity has been him using a child's sickness to taunt the father, and although you'd expect that this would be a step too far, many of his followers are actively praising him. John Rosenberg is a comic book artist. One of his sons has cerebral palsy. He has been uh, accepted for surgery that would treat his condition. But as Rosenberg lives in America, this surgery isn't free. So to try and pay for it, the artist set up a GoFundMe page. Most people would draw the line at using a child's illness to belittle a parent, but Tate is not most people. Um, Andrew Tate says, what's wrong with your son? He says, read it for yourself uh, or have a literate friend help you. And he says, do you feel like a failure that the amount you need to help your own son is less than a quarter that I spent on one of five of my cars? I'll help you if you ask. It's nothing to me. Your comic books have failed, but I am a success. Ask nicely and I'll save your son. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and then the guy says, imagine being this guy and thinking you're superior to anyone. He says, those, are the top, those at the top enjoy the benefits of their merits and believe everyone should be judged purely on their merits. You can take your money and shove it up your superior asshole cobra potato. Come punch me. It's nothing to me. Your comic books have failed. Ridiculous. My God. <laughs> Luckily, the ki they did get the money they needed for the, the kid. For the record. So that's great. Tate is a dirt bag. What an absolute dirt bag. Tate. People grow up. And yes... Most people are sexual in some way, whether they're, my hair was bad that day, straight or gay or bi, whether they're men or women, cis, trans, non-binary, whatever they happen to be. Yes, your kids grow up someday and they will probably, statistically speaking, be sexual beings. Uh, it's not something parents want to think about, but it's true. But that's none of your business. And it doesn't diminish their value as human beings at all. Like, what is wrong with you? Tate, I think you're... Do you understand that you're inherently saying that, like, all the women you've slept with, that you just have, like... And I know he knows this, but I just want to point it out. He has no respect for them. And he thinks that they're just, like, pieces of shit that he should use, abuse, and throw away. Because, well, they're sucking his dick. So why should he care about them? It's a disgusting worldview. MMO addicted. I mean, I see why I I see why you guys watch me. <laughs> Stupid. I haven't seen the video, fucking movies. And virgins. You oh, know the Spider-Man story. Everybody yes. does. You were a kid at one point, you fuck. He, you know Spider-Man. So there's a large part of what he does, which is intentional trolling. Turning it up to an 11 in order to piss people off to get a reaction. But when you peel away, like, layers of the onion to see, like, oh, is this guy, is he doing that just to, like, troll? Like, you realize that's actually who he is as well. I, th I think if you watch Andrew Tate's videos, you start to think, okay. It sounds like it's doubled. Like, like, the audio is happening in, like, like really close, but it's, like, doubled, and there's a little bit of, like, offset on the doubling of the clips. Is this a facade? Is he playing a character? But when you watch enough of his videos, you start to hear him sound level-headed sometimes. But sure. he's still Andrew Tate to the fullest. Does he, does he hang the robber by his neck in the middle of the city with rope? So he... And, and hangs him to death. No. He takes his ass down the police station to fill in paperwork. What kind of fucking superhero are you? 
Killed your uncle. I think he's just mad at the concept of a superhero. I don't is that not true? How can, this is what I mean. I am an extremely intelligent individual. Let's pause there for no particular reason. All right. But for me to try and understand other people's worldviews sometimes, it's really interesting. I just said that if you're a superhero and you catch the man who kills your uncle, you hang him in the middle of the city to teach him a lesson for killing your uncle. Yeah, that's what supervillains do. Tate, you're describing a supervillain? At best, you're describing an anti-hero like the Punisher. <laughs> and even then, I don't think the Punisher is quite that dramatic. He'll murder criminals, but I don't think he feels the need typically to, like, hang them in the street for everyone to see unless it was a particularly awful person. <laughs> it's certainly not Spider-Man, let me put it that way. Except in the What If story, that was What If Spider-Man Became the Punisher, which is interesting, but it's not what Tate's talking about. I've read that one. Have you guys read that? <laughs> Hold on. Spider-Man is the Punisher. It's pretty good. This one, What If the Punisher was Spider-Man. <laughs> it's great. I've read that one. His web shooters are guns. I like the what if stories. And these men find that offensive. No, you should, no, you can't hurt people who hurt your family. You take them to the police station. How can that offend you? Like on what level must you be a bitch in your heart for that to offend you? So if I were to slap the ogre, sorry, the wife of the sex toy, the ogre, if I were to slap her, his number one retribution to me would be to take me to the police station? Probably. That's assault. And it would be hilarious. Please do it, Tate. So you wind up in jail. That'd be beautiful. That's what he'd do? Yeah, adults actually use the law. They don't just fight each other for fun in the street. Oh, you beat up my ogre. I'm going to call the police. Like, th these are men? It's just like, and then I'm gonna count they that. find me offensive. Him questioning their gender. I'm going to count that towards the... We're at seven now. I understand I'm abrasive. I come across that way on purpose. But I just don't re think they realize the videos they're making, they're trying to hate on me, but they're just exuding feminine qualities. There's another one. You're a lol cow, Tate. They're making fun of you. They're complaining about my hair. They're complaining that I would get retribution for a killed family member. They're complaining that I don't idolize females as gods. No, they're complaining that you view women as lesser than men. It's not about putting people up on a pedestal. It's about being egalitarian. They're complaining. Like, what are you complaining about? These guys sound like women. There's it's another one. It's clear that the little fat boy has never had a girlfriend. And it's clear the sex toy's wife is in charge of him. It's obvious. It's obvious for everyone to see. Because he respects and loves his wife? What? Does Tate think the only, like, modality of being with a woman is to dominate her and you can't have, like, a loving partnership? Great. I'm sure that'll work out for him in the long run. Dislike me, a man who lives on his own terms. I have women so beautiful. Women they could never... Tate, you hire escorts. We understand. We don't care. If you want to hire escorts, that's your business. That's fine. But no one is jealous of you that you get to hire escorts constantly. Most people don't want that. And let me be clear. There's nothing wrong with engaging in, and, and uh, soliciting sex work if that's legal where you are, right? That's your business. That's between you and the sex worker, and that's wonderful. That's fine. What I am saying is going online and being like, Look at all the beautiful women I paid to stand to be around me. That's pathetic. That's pathetic. <laughs> or possibly fathom touching who can't control me. And they have ogres telling them what to do. Why do they hate Tate? Mm, work it out. Because all... you're a bad guy. It's not rocket surgery. <laughs> Obvious. Geeks. Hero. I don't think he's actually yeah. just hates Spider-Man. <laughs> Boiled down, he just hates the fact that fictionally someone has powers that exceed his own. <laughs> Excuse me. I never said Spider-Man's powers exceed mine. They do, though? Spider-Man is a fictional superhero with super strength? What? 
Spider-Man's powers do not exceed mine. I still have- They literally do. Spider-Man could pop your head if he punched you with all his force. Have more power than- Not that it matters, he's fictional, but my point is to say that you're like more powerful than Spider-Man is a really cringe thing to say because it's like objectively untrue. <laughs> Spider-Man, I just dislike him. Also, a lot of comics were made. People made a lot of comics about my Spider-Man adventures. In fact, we're gonna put some screenshots in here. You can see that. <laughs> Look, I had someone draw me beating up Spider-Man. This is canon, damn it. <laughs> Keto defeats Spider-Man. Yes. So Spider-Man. Oh my God, I want this comic. He beats Spider-Man to death. <laughs> he called them dorks and then he's like actually guys i'm way more powerful than spider-man look at this comic with someone true where i beat spider-man to death <laughs> god damn it <laughs> the humor this is bringing me is probably more pleasure than Tate has ever brought to any woman. I love it. <laughs> it's been proven in comic books. My Aikido defeats Spider-Man. Once again, incorrect. If it's not actually Conan that's playing Spider-Man, <laughs> oh boy. They're not men. There you go. They're barely boys. <laughs> right. Look at these Spider-Men. <laughs> the first thing no hesitation. Goes, not men. Yeah. Clear enough. They're not men. At least, with But they're not. And they're going to laugh at that point because instead of accepting the reality that the characters who play Spider-Man are weak little boys. You want this in the Hall of Fame? We'll do a vote. Okay, there's a vote. Does this belong in the Hall of Fame of Chud Watch? Vote on it in the chat. If they accept that reality, then they have to admit they're weak little boys. So they deny it. They're just denying reality. They're denying reality. They're denying the fact that no man wants to be them. They're denying the fact that they're not masculine individuals. They're denying everything. Oh, no, they're, they're... There's the masculine thing again. We're at, we're at 10. We're at 10 they're a lady comments. Men too. They're men too because they look like pussies. I'm a man. I look like a pussy. Mm. Not in the real world, my friend. In the real world, outside of YouTube, where you can get a whole bunch of other incels to like your videos. In the real world, when people like you are sat next to someone like me, it's very obvious to everybody observing that you're a second-rate individual. It's obvious. It's obvious by your characteristics. It's obvious by the female that you hold company. The ogre. Female. It's all obvious. They're not men. At least with Batman, they got Christian Bale. All right, this clip's a little longer than need be. Batman is... I explained this in the Spider-Man review when we tackled this. Batman is... is Hold on, we'll take a look. It looks like this is going in the Hall of Fame based on the vote, by the way. <clears throat> Let's look at Batman versus Spider-Man. Batman comic. We'll just look at a smattering. Spider-Man comic. Okay. <clears throat> so you'll notice Batman, as he's typically depicted in the comics because of the nature of Batman as a fictional character. Batman's just a normal human who is peak physical human because he trains so often. He doesn't have superpowers. He just uses his brain, his gadgets, and his physical training to get around. So Batman is typically depicted as uh, uh, peak fitness in terms of like a, a good, he, he, how do I put this? He's not Arnold Schwarzenegger, but he's in really good physical shape. He's got a good balance between flexibility and power, right? So someone like Christian Bale, who can work out and get into really good shape, makes sense. Because he can look like someone who's very in shape. You know? This is the build of Batman, typically. Um, at least when we're talking about Bruce Wayne Batman. So it makes sense to have him be like this. Spider-Man, on the other hand, is not this. Spider-Man's powers and abilities while he does have super strength because he has the proportional strength of a spider um is more acrobatic 
He doesn't, well, he's in good shape. He has what I would more consider like a, an acrobat's or swimmer's bod. Like he has abs and stuff and he has definition, but he doesn't have bulk because he doesn't need it because his muscles are like super powered. Spider-Man is a gymnast. Yeah, he has a gymnast body. So it wouldn't make sense to get like a big beefy dude to play Spider-Man because that's not how he's depicted. This, uh, this picture from Ultimate Spider-Man, for instance, is a really good example of how Spider-Man is often depicted in more modern times. Very slender, acrobatic, flexible. Um, older Spider-Man from like the 60s and 70s was a little more muscular, but especially modern Spider-Man coming from after the 2000s to today is usually depicted as this more, is lithe the correct word? Acrobatic gymnast. Which makes sense for the kind of character he is, and that's perfectly fine. None of this matters, of course, because we're talking about just a fictional character. It doesn't really matter. But I just find it funny that Tate thinks he can go and talk about a subject like this and act like he knows what he's talking about when he doesn't. He just sounds like an idiot. <laughs> he just shows the entire Batman movie. <laughs> it's the rest of the play time. Like, he's not Batman, then you just... Can't Spider-Man lift something like 1.5 tons? Oh, I think the power levels vary. I'm not sure. So it's like a one and a half hour Batman film. You think you have, you think you have to have a bicked, shaved head in order to be a man in Andrew Tate's wheelhouse? You joke, Leon, but I remember watching a video, uh, Tate on hair, <laughs> where he talks about hair. You caring about your haircut and being like, oh, oh, I want a little three on the side and I want it uh, li lined up right here. Is you being an absolute pussy? That's why he just yeah. shaved his hair off. Why is that not completely true? I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely asking, why is it not completely true? He because it doesn't matter. Ascribing like masculine or femininity to caring about how you look is kind of silly considering half of your complaints about these two is that you think they don't look the way you think they should look. So it's just ironic that you draw the line at hair, right? I could easily say to you, oh, you care about your body and how physically attractive you look to other people. What are you, a woman? Now, that would be sexist and ridiculous, but I'm saying that's what Tate's doing. So it's just weird that he draws the line at hair when he clearly cares about the way he looks in other ways. He even did the, ooh, can I have a three on the side, in a pussy's voice. So he just did it in a pussy's voice because he knows it's true. He's, in, he's making fun of you, Tate. Do you get that? So they're just going to state something which is true. They're going to say it in a pussy's voice, confirming I'm right. And then they're going to laugh about it to try and deny it because they don't want to accept that they're pussies. That's their argument. Because <clears throat> he doesn't care. Yeah, it's not because his hair fell out of his head when he was 25 <laughs> and he's completely bald. It has nothing to do with that, I'm sure. Here's a picture of me at 28 with a full head of hair. So uh, I don't really want to comment. I don't want to comment because I'm not going to comment on other people's looks. I don't think it's fair to do. As usual, the sex toy is wrong. He chose wrong with his marriage because he chose an ogre. He's wrong with everything he said in the video. And his little YouTube partner, I think his YouTube partner might be a more attractive female than his wife is. Anyone out there who can design comics, anyone who's... Tate is attracted to Mr. GG, confirmed. Good with drawing or whatever, whatever, whatever. I want a three or four page comic where Spider-Man meets me. We meet on top of a building. I call him a punk. He tries to throw some web at me. I use my Aikido ninja moves and oh, I God. destroy <laughs> Spider-Man. We're gonna conquer Spider-Man right here, right now, and you're gonna help me. Fuck Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, he couldn't even do a proper front flip, dude. Excuse me, my flip was good. Why do you have to end it with a jump in the pool? Because <laughs> I like my flip, it's good. I'm fucking inspired. Right what was the flip? Let me look at the flip. Fuck Spider Man. Yeah, he didn't do a whole rotation. It's better than I could do. Well, he couldn't even do a proper front flip, dude. Excuse me, my flip was good. Why do you have to end it with a jump in the pool? Because <laughs> I like my flip, it's good. I'm fucking inspired right now. I know, that was literally one video, and I'm, uh, I'm emotionally exhausted. Some of you who are really my fans, you've watched all my videos all the way back. I've got stuff from years ago, loads of stuff. But um, I can't remember I've done this before, so if I've done this before, forgive me. But you ain't gonna be able to do shit about it, because you ain't got hands like mine, so if you really want to... He's literally just <laughs> threatening physical violence. To the <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. If my, if, my, if my YouTube upsets you, listen, I just insulted your wife, right? Everyone who's gonna watch this, everyone who watches this who thinks his wife is ugly, write his wife is ugly in the comments. Let's get started, right? Everyone Tate's gonna get his channel deleted. You can't do this. Everyone thinks your wife is ugly, bro. Little fat boy, you're a little fat boy. You're a geek. 
I will fight both of you at the same time in the cage. Same time, two on one, <laughs> national television here in Romania. That, there's an offer. I'll buy you a business class ticket to come get an ass kicking. I just insulted your wife, bro. Your wife. How pathetic to think that, like, anytime you're an asshole, that, like, yeah, come and fight me. Otherwise, you are a bitch. Like, you're an adult, man. Like, it's great. I have no problem with, like, combat sports. It's not something I'm interested in. But occasionally, like, on Reddit or whatever, if there's, like, a big UFC fight, I'll take a look at the VOD. I just find that stuff interesting, even though I'm not, like, into it. Um, that's fine. Like, if you're into combat sports, awesome. Good for you. Perfect your craft. It is a skill like, like any other. It's worthwhile. So good for you. Um, but to, like, take that out of the realm of sportsmanship and, like, competition and turn it into, like, a fuck you, I have a personal problem with you and I'm gonna beat you because of it, that's really unhealthy and it's real cringe. It's real, real cringe. Life. What are you gonna do about it? Make another YouTube video? Mm. Report me? Mm, me, me, me? Be a man! I mean, they could absolutely report you. And if YouTube was actually paying attention, you would get your channel removed. <laughs> and show up! You won't. You won't, will you? Because you know that your Somebody wife's gonna watch you get your to ass kicked. You have to go home to the ogre with a broken face. So of course I threaten violence, because I'm capable of violence. This is the bottom line of masculinity. We just discussed how the bottom, bottom line of masculinity was females. Another bottom line of masculinity is the capability for violence. For the longest period of human time, a man was a man because he could fight. That's what being a man is. And that's awful. And that's not a good place to live. I'm glad we don't live in that world anymore, Tate. You should probably learn that that's not the world we live in. Now, that doesn't mean you can't exercise your strength and ability to fight in healthy ways. Again, kickboxing and other combat sports a healthy way to exercise that urge in you. That's awesome. Happy for you. But to take it out of that realm and bring it into the personal to threaten people and want to beat them up because you don't like them is, again, just kind of cringe. <laughs> you, have to, you have to be able to fight. You have to have choices to fuck. You clearly had no choice because of what you chose. If you had more than one option, you wouldn't have picked what you picked. But if you have choices and you can throw down this is what being a man is all about, my friends. So of course I'm gonna threaten my YouTube viewers. If you don't know my YouTube channel, come do something. Including you two punks. I am the kind of man. I didn't think we'd get through this whole video, but I think I wanna get through this whole video because it's hilarious. Who, for the majority of his life, found someone else in the world who thought they could beat me, agreed to a time, a date, and a place, trained, turned up, got in the ring or the cage, and fought to see who the better man was. You're the kind of man who makes shady YouTube videos. Your second You're also making YouTube videos, Tate. Maybe glass houses, you know? Right, to the big G. Everyone knows it's true, including you. That's why you're angry. That's why you're getting so mad about me calling your wife an ogre, because you know she's an ogre. Right. Anyway, back to oh, the video closed. Now I gotta find it again. It's in my second inbox on Instagram. I gotta go through all these bitches' <laughs> messages. Go through your YouTube history. <laughs> it's just an excuse so he could be like, "Look at how many women are messaging me on Instagram." <laughs> Pathetic. To me, all these hoes. I gotta find some geek. Hi. These schmucks, I swear, these men are next level joke. They act like minimum wage or something. Don't know what that means. They do not want to understand that the attitude towards life has made you a man's man because they are failures. They are too jealous. This is all here on you. This is what people are sending me. On Instagram, people are already making fun of them and sending me the link. Yeah, your fan base, who again, are not the most confident, well-rounded people. No offense to them. But again, if you're following Tate, <laughs> Unironically, you should probably reevaluate. I'm gonna go get some more water. Be back in a sec. I'll put something on for you to listen to. <clears throat> Be right back. I'm looking at the crowd here and the tens of thousands, probably hundred thousand. Nah, I shouldn't play that one. Um, sure. There's only Laughter. a minute. Is a deterrent. You're back. The media said Joe Biden's president. The media said what?
the Associated Press. Shared that Joe Biden is president. The media said what? <laughs> Okay. That's the only reason I found out about this shit. I don't watch Mr. Fucking Soy. All right, here we go. Anyway, anyway. And I, and I... <laughs> Got him. Sorry, and I promise I'm not going to call his wife an ogre again because it's too easy. It's too easy. I haven't even insulted the fat kid very much. The fat kid, I haven't even insulted at all. I'm just too busy making fun of this guy's ugly wife. I'm sorry. I'm emotionally exhausted. Some of you who are really my fans, you've watched all my videos all the way back. I've got stuff from years ago, loads of stuff. Fat guy just said he was my fan, a little chest tap. Fat dude. I'll go easy on you. I'll knock him out. You, I'll just like, you know, I'll just tap you a little bit. Tate is so mad that these guys are making fun of him. It's so beautiful. The taste of the salt is so good. The other dude thinks he's a tough guy. But, um, I can't remember I've done this before. So if I've done this before, forgive me. But you ain't gonna be able to do shit about it because you ain't got hands like mine. So if you really wanna... He's literally just <laughs> threatening physical violence to the people <laughs> watching his videos in the first 30 seconds. Does he have two camera angles, by the way, for the car video? That was a that was a slick little switch, but I, yeah, I, this is like uh, a GoPro, I think, he just switched to. I mean, he planned, like, the perfect transition on that, too. I don't know if he noticed. Yeah. He was talking, then instantly turned over. I was like, oh. They're giving you some credit there. See? Sorry, not... What's your name? This was your fake name. Okay, they're giving you some credit. See? Cameraman. They like you. They wouldn't like you. you. You said his wife was ugly, but they still like your work. They grate on me and they piss me off. But the one that's probably up there that annoys me the most is she said yes. So I do like, I'm kind of like anti super sentimental lovey-dovey stuff too. It like makes my skin kind of crawl a little bit, but I, I, I have the capacity to like feel happiness and you know congratulate <laughs> i'm not a sociopath yeah you, know, I just... you have to be kind of a sociopath to be a youtuber i'm curious where you think where do you think he's gonna go with this is it gonna be like well she has to say yes or like if there was even a choice you're not a real man you know what i mean like i'm just curious where he's gonna go with it i think actually i think that's a great prediction i think that's what it's gonna be although if he's gonna criticize the way people go about it i see some validity in that because like um, right. if you have like your phone a camera and you go like, like this like it's and you, you like bring out the ring like that's what i'm saying i'm, I'm anti-social media proposals as well oh my god she said yes why are you with a bitch that would say no there you go mm. there ain't a bitch i fucked in the last 10 years who wouldn't say yes to me after getting fucked once <laughs> fuck the relationship they have tate um comes off to me as the kind of guy that thinks it's gay to go down on a woman so I'm guessing no, one session with Tate is probably not enough to make you want to spend the rest of your life with him. <laughs> have this slight freedom he kind of allows to them? He thinks women have freedom. They don't have freedom, my friend, because when they meet a man of substance, they're instantly enslaved. And they're not enslaved because I want to enslave them, they enslave themselves. They meet a man like me, they get fucked by a man like me and they'll do anything to keep me. They are biologically wired to try and find the best possible mate for offspring. They want the best possible genetic choice. This is why women are happy to share a top tier male. This is why every single woman out there will fuck an NBA star knowing he's not loyal. Loyalty doesn't matter to women. All they want is the genetic number one. When they fuck a man like me, they are instantly enslaved by their biology. <laughs> also, he paid them to be there, so yeah. That helps. Say no. There is no one better. How else are you going to have a chess genius kickboxing world champion? Six foot the level of delusion that Tate is living with is just beyond the pale. I cannot believe it. How does he function on a day to day basis with this level of delusions of grandeur? Millionaire, bop, 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 bop. There's no one to replace me with, so they become enslaved. I don't have to do anything. I ignore their messages. They enslave themselves. This man thinks they have free will. Do you know why? Because on the very rare occasion that a woman is stupid enough to go anywhere near this dude, the first thing she does when she wakes up is regret it and leave. That kind of felt like projection. 
to be entirely honest. It's true. As soon as I sling that dick, it's all gone. Why? They, it's true. The fact they cannot see that's true shows they've never done it. All the real G's watching this. All the real G's watching this. Am I telling the truth? You lay dick once right, boom, and it's over. I love you. I want to be with you. Oh, do you want me to cook? Oh, do you want me to clean? Why do you want to see me? Hey, I miss you. Da -da. All the real G's know. He's all like, oh, you fuck them once and they care about you? <laughs> <laughs> because yes. Yes. You're clearly stating you can't do it, my friend. You are doing nothing but advertising your pussies. You're telling the world you can't fuck. Not only are you a fat little girl, you're back to being a girl. You can't fuck. Any girl I fucked once would never say no. No matter the result of that sexual <laughs> yeah. experience, I know, and in 22 seconds, still would say yes. <laughs> No matter the result of that sexual experience, I nutted in 22 seconds. I think you're talking about yourself there, my friend. I think you've given it away. I think you've just given it away why the women don't. They're calling you bad at sex, Tate. They're making a joke about you. Enslaved themselves for you. I think he just did, didn't he? No, no matter the result of the sexual experience. I mean, I, it lasted 22 seconds. <laughs> Suspect. A little bit suspicious. Maybe that's why the other guy got the ogre. Because she's happy with 22 seconds. Who knows? I mean, yeah, I'm with him. Like, I, this makes me want to die, like these TikToks. <laughs> so, like, we can agree there, Andrew Tate. But this is the dangerous part, though, right? This is kind of what I was talking mm -hmm. about. You start to agree with him in certain areas, and now you're like, wait, do I agree with everything you're saying? No, 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 no. There's, like, certain underlying principles, but then he takes it to, like, s so far into space that it's like, wow, I just, now I just feel like I can't even agree with him on that little bit because it makes me feel like I'm a misogynist by association. So I don't want to get married anyway because I want to sling this dick left, right, so I'm going to do it. I'm not going to sit there and go, ah, if I put my dick in that bitch, then this bitch is going to go to the government and they're going to take half my stuff. No, thank you. I'm not stupid. Government needs to stay away from my equipment. I'm confused. Andrew knows what a prenup is. Why is he acting like he doesn't know? Andrew knows what a prenup is. He should just get a woman and have sex with her for 22 seconds and then make her sign a piece of paper to promise to not take half his stuff. Or could just not get married. What, what, why would I do that? Men don't want to get married. Men get married. Let me tell you why men get married. Men get married for one of two reasons. One, the woman forces them. I want to get married. I want to get married. I want to get married. Oh, fine. Like a pussy. Or two, they're scared of losing the woman. Oh, shit. She might leave me. She might leave me. Do you want to get married? Is Tate incapable of understanding actually loving another person romantically? That's so sad. <laughs> hey, baby. If you're me and you know the woman's never gonna leave and the woman can't tell you what to do, why the fuck would you marry her? I'll never get married because I don't need to. I don't need to get married because my women can't leave me because they're enslaved to my ultimate power because they adore me. So why the fuck would I waste time and money getting married for? They're all you're also paying them, which is fine. Again, I have no problem with sex work. But like, is Andrew under the delusion that the women he pays to come and spend time with him and the women that he employs under his pimp business? Does he think they're there because they find him charming? Does he not know it's because of the money? <laughs> it just seems delusional. I don't know. Already, they're more loyal to me than, I guarantee you my women are more loyal to me and love me more than the ogre loves that dude. He gets more shit off his ogre and her boo, why are you always busy? Oh, I'm sad, all this shit. She gives him more headache than my women will ever give me. Why would my women give me no headache? And he married his. Yeah, you're their employer. <laughs> that's not, that's, whatever. He's proven my point absolutely. Marriage is for men like you, for one of the two reasons, probably a combination of both. Men like me don't need to get married. Let's listen to this little fat girl talk about prenups. I've got shit to do. I've got shit to do. I'm just looking at my fucking solid gold Hublot. It, it, it's sunny outside. I got a Ferrari. I'm sitting here looking at these dorks. I guess they really got to you then. Bruised egos are a bitch. This is genuinely upsetting me. These nerds are wasting my life. I live a very good life. A whole hour of my fantastic life. Listen to these nerds. And not a little girl's gonna talk about prenups. Out here on the streets. Bitches waiting for me to mix it up in a pot than me fucking sitting at home with some hoe. I said yes, so, so now I'm your wife, so why are you out so late? <sighs> you better be quiet. Hey, 
Yeah, you better be quiet, or you know, you know what's <laughs> coming after you, that, huh? Just starts beating his GoPro right after. Yeah. <laughs> Tate's been on camera talking about how he hits women. So even though they're using this as a joke, he legitimately does hit women. I can't stop looking at. Actually, this is a beautiful still frame. If you just zoom in on his face right there, <laughs> that's all I need to know about Andrew Tate. Stand up. Yeah, that beautiful still frame. I almost look like his wife. Almost. Move a couple bitches out of the way. Get. I walk to the bathroom. I look in the mirror. I'm built like motherfucking Hercules. One second. Excuse me. Take speeches. Quiet. Who needs editing? Yeah, who needs editing? Exactly. I'm a G. Who needs editing? Just shut up. I tell my. I don't know. I mean, you only have 32,000 subscribers compared to like Lush's million, so I guess editing does count for something. But you know, you don't have to edit. That's fine. I'm gonna shut up, and I continue to film my videos. That's never happened to you. You ain't got any women. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's hard for you, but let's 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 try and do it bit by bit. You wake up, bitch here, the bitch here. Move them hoes out of the way. You walk to the bathroom. You're six foot three, built like Hercules. <laughs> Caramel. Real quick, if we could. <laughs> Small comparison. Yeah, I just wanna. Is it literally all fucking animated right now? Jesus Christ. Built like Hercules. It even surprises me that he allows women to sleep on his bed at this point, and he doesn't have just like little doggy beds on the floor for them. That is, uh, oh, that is too obvious. This video's gotten boring. It's boring now. I'm trying my best with you guys. I'm trying to keep it entertaining for that you. Astute but. observation. I didn't even think about that. The fact that he's sharing personal space with them after he's used them for their only God-given purpose. Making any type of compromise with a woman is kind of pussy on his part. I don't know. <laughs> I was gonna say that's not. That sounds like something Spider-Man would do. <laughs> <laughs> Women sleeping in my bed's a bad thing. Once again, no women sleep in their beds. So. Well, the one dude's married, so his wife probably does. But, again, they're making fun of how misogynistic you are, Tate. It's a joke. You know, jokes, the thing funny people do. Mm. Where no woman should sleep in my bed. 22 seconds. We have 22 seconds and we have the ogre marriage. The video's almost done, by the way. I know this has been taking forever, but I wanted to finish this one. Sure. I'll walk into the fucking most premier establishment you can name with my shirt unbuttoned so every bitch in there knows I cheat. <laughs> I find myself super funny. <laughs> I find myself super funny. Narcissists usually do. I'm, I am super funny. So every bitch in there knows that I cheat? I think he's, he's, he's still throwing curveballs at me somehow and I, I don't know how. <laughs> The title has nothing to do with this so far. Now, I just realized that absorbing your enemy's energy. Is he getting to the point? Is it gonna be like the last? Is this like a clickbait vlog right now? You know those little frogs that are like toxic colors? That's me. I'm just like a frog. <laughs> I mean, come on. All in all, you boil it down. I'm just like a frog. Okay? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know those little frogs <laughs> with toxic colors? That's me with the shirt unbuttoned. I'm a frog. Hello, I'm my toxic. darling. Hello, I'm a my chica. baby. <laughs> I'm a cheater. Why oh, he I... does a pretty good Andrew Tate impersonation. <laughs> I button my shirt if I'm just going to cheat on every bitch that walks in the place. It's true. Why would I button my shirt? I mean, it's cold now. It's like minus 10, so I'm wearing a, you know, I should have had an unbuttoned shirt for this video. I don't want to start again. They're not worth starting again. I'm not watching this shit again. Just change the title to I'm a frog, capital <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, really miss, missed an opportunity for a better title here, in my opinion. When you put a shirt on, Do you look buttons up? <laughs> you don't want anyone to look at you. <laughs> Here's where I get worried. You go to the comments, top comments. Seriously, who hates on Tate is one of the most genius ways of instilling confidence to everybody. Exactly. So now, now they're going to go through my videos and see that everyone actually agrees with what I say. Yeah, your audience of people who are all people who are jealous of you because they're insecure in some way. Or they've bought some really destructive view of what masculinity should be. And they want to be like you. Luckily, it's not that many people. You only have 32,000 subscribers. Your videos get fewer than that, typically, which is good. Like, this video only got 2.9. This got 5.5, 6.5. It's a small but dedicated community of red pill MGTOW type people that enjoy your content. It's not healthy for them, and it's not healthy for you. But at least it's contained. We'll put it that way. But they don't agree. 
and it bothers them they don't agree. And it bothers them like, oh, I can't possibly agree with him. And this, this they said it themselves, they're conflicted. He says things that are true, but then I, I don't want to agree with him because if I agree There's with him, I have to accept capitalism. I'm a loser. If you No, they said they agree with like the fact that they think proposals on like social media or like TikTok proposals are cringe. And then they said, and then you take it crazy far, which you always do. And that makes them think you're hilarious and disagree with you. At no point did they said that they think they're a loser. You watch my entire channel and you agree with everything I say. The only logical conclusion at the end of it all is that men they don't agree with everything you say. They made fun of 99% so of what you said. You don't want to accept that you're losers. So you try and sit there and you try and establish dissonance. You try and make fun of it with little jokes, little jokes. Oh, I lasted 22 seconds in bed. <laughs> You make your little jokes, trying your best to pretend that everything I've said is not true. Because the more true it is, the bigger of a loser you are. And we're about to go through now a whole bunch of people in the comments saying I'm right. So guess what that says about YouTube dorks? I don't know if we want... Okay, let's take a look at their original video. Do you have a link to their original video? Let's take a look. <clears throat> Three days ago... Nope, that's Tate talking about it. Let me see if I can find... Whose channel was it on? Was it on Leon's channel or was it the other guy's channel? Oh, I think it was this one. Yeah, six days ago. Listen. Okay, so their video has... 10 times... Over 10 times. 15 times the views. And the comments here are almost certainly going to be making fun of you, right? So, if, by your own standard, since this comment section is making fun of you, like this one, wakes up as Tate one day, immediately finds rope, a rafter, and a chair. So there are more comments on this channel that are saying that you're disgusting and making fun of how silly you are. So that means they're right, right? If you want to be internally consistent. Watch the same video or if you know anything <laughs> about this man but the delivery and everything else this man is about is completely toxic and terrible <laughs> he didn't even toxic they're to he's toxic oh he's toxic the man yeah you are the man who beat the shit out of me in front of my wife was toxic it's a dork turn up turn up accept my invitation get on the plane get in the cage <laughs> I'm not toxic. Come and fight me. <laughs> and I'll show you what toxic is. Your wife can watch from somewhere at the back. This is Romania. We got beautiful women around. It's going to be like hot chicks around. She has to be in a burka or something. He didn't even circle back to the fucking title, by the way. He just left no. that hanging. I guess it's just the assumption that people are constantly emailing him, telling him to button his shirt. So he's absorbing the hate by making a YouTube video about having an unbuttoned shirt. Oh. Fucking tape. I love how someone else had to explain that to me, aside from him. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The ride we went on. Just him being like, hey guys, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Anyways, the reason why my nipples it's are nipple usually Friday. out. I'm bored of this. Are they done with my videos? All right, I think they're done with my videos. I just want to do a real quick thing. Leon Lush and Mr. GG. Because we've already looked up the ogre. It's Leon Lush's wife. But it's very interesting to me because if you look up Leon Lush Instagram, Instagram is different than YouTube or Twitter. Because Twitter, you can get your ideas across. YouTube, you edit little videos. But your Instagram really shows your life. That's what <laughs> makes Instagram so interesting. Like, people who are... That's where I go to get reality. Instagram. Where everything is an accurate reflection of people's lives and nothing is fake. To be influential on Instagram, even if it's all fake, you still have to go to beautiful places. You still have to have a beautiful car. You still have to, even if it's airbrush, you still have to look good. Like Instagram is a fake world, but still you can show your life. So I like to look at people's Instagrams because it says a lot about their life as a whole. So, I mean, we know what my Instagram's about. You can see my Instagram, you can see me. You see cars, money, glamorous location, beautiful women. That's who I live. You know, I'm a full grown man. I grew up with nothing, no family money, nothing. I started from a lesser place than these two. I decided to become a fighter, worked very hard, became a four-time world champion, became a multimillionaire. And I enjoy the finest things on earth. I enjoy the finest Cuban cigars. I enjoy the finest cars money can buy. I enjoy big expensive steaks and, and very nice six-star hotels. And you're still miserable. How sad. This is what I enjoy. 
So that's what my life is about. My life is about achievement, my life's about being successful, and my life's about spending money. Because I made millions, so why the fuck not spend it? What's this guy's life about? It's just him, clips of him on YouTube. Isn't Yeah, it's his channel? That's his job? His Instagram promotes his channel. Do you know how jobs and online presence works? You're promoting your business, which is scamming insecure, desperate men into paying you to tell them how to live a life they think they should live, and his job is entertaining people. Their Instagrams are going to reflect that. Isn't this the perfect circle to my video? What did I say at the beginning that their entire existence is YouTube? Look at this guy's Instagram, ladies and gentlemen, Leon Lush. It's just clips and clips and clips of him on YouTube. Him on YouTube, him on YouTube, him dressed, covered in rose petals. I guess that's <laughs> what a real man should look like instead of me. Ooh, we got another one. Hold on. So far, we're at 13 jokes that are just the same joke of they're not a man. And just clips of him. Look, I, I did a new YouTube clip. Look, I did a new YouTube clip. Look, I did a new YouTube clip. Yeah, it's his job. It's his job. Because his whole existence is YouTube. Outside of, ex outside of YouTube, I can see he has... What does he have? He has yogurt. He shows one picture of his wife. Not very many. Don't blame him. Um, and then just YouTube clips. This is him without a beard. I mean, is that, is okay. that the kind of guy who gets bullied in school? A bit. I, there's nothing about this guy's life that's interesting or aspirational. I mean... He has a loving wife and a successful business on YouTube? That's... He has a sense of humor. He's able to laugh at himself. These are all admirable qualities, and I'm happy for him. He's doing the soy face, you know, the men when they're like, because they have low testosterone levels, he's doing that all over it. <laughs> what? <laughs> 14. It's pretty embarrassing as a whole. I mean, this is him dressed as a tomato. Yeah. I mean, this is the man telling you how a man should act. This is the man telling a four-time kickboxing world champion multimillionaire how men act. Yeah, you can act however you want, Tate. You identify as a man, you're a man. He's a man with a sense of humor about himself, which I think is healthier than what you're doing. It's quite interesting. Let's look at Mr. Gigi. So, I mean, that's perfect circle. That's proved my point. The outside of their little YouTube videos, these guys are nothing. They have nothing, they've done nothing. Outside of getting YouTube followers, they've done nothing. They haven't been in the ring or the cage. They've not done anything in sports. They're not particularly funny. Okay, and they're better at you than YouTube. At YouTube. What's your point? You have different jobs. You were a kickboxer, so you can fight. They're YouTubers, so they can do YouTube more successfully than you. Yeah, people are better at the thing they choose to do every day. How shocking. Financially successful. They, they've done nothing. Let's see what Mr. Gigi to say. Mr. GG Instagram. Ooh. And here we are again. YouTube clips. Again, it's his job? Yeah? His whole life is YouTube clips. Hey guys, I made a new YouTube clip. I wake up, I drive supercars, I go and look at one of my casinos. I own 15 casinos, by the way. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. I go look <laughs> what? At my casinos. I spend time with beautiful women. I go to beautiful places. I do interesting things. These guys, oh, I'm going to make a new video uh, and put it on my Instagram and my YouTube. Guys, I made a YouTube video. Guys, I made a YouTube video. Their whole existence is YouTube. Isn't that sad? Isn't that sad that that's how they define their individuality as a person? That's how they define... You define yourself by paying women to sleep with you and going around the world acting like a douchebag. That's so much worse. Here we go. Let's leave it on this. When you finally finish editing at 4.30 a.m. and hit 10K followers on Instagram while knocking on the door of 200K subs on YouTube. That's his comment to his picture. Yeah, he's successfully running his business, entertaining people. He's actually being productive by producing something, producing entertainment. What do you produce? You sit on your ass all day take pictures for Twitter of your stupid cars and then make money off the backs of women that you're using for their bodies so they can make money and then hand it to you. You're a piece of shit, Tate. You're a leech. This, this isn't relatable at all, as in he's the only man in the world to have ever done it. 
I just want to show off the onesie I bought for three dollars. And here he is, in a onesie. Yeah, it's a cute onesie. Like a geek, bragging about the fact he has YouTube followers because outside of YouTube, both of these men are nothing. And I am saying this genuinely. Man he has two hundred thousand followers on YouTube, Tate. You only have fifteen cars, so he's winning by quite a bit. Man to man, you made a video making fun of me. I made fun of you. Blah blah blah. But man to man. If anything I said has offended you, genuinely, you are welcome to travel to Bucharest, Romania, first class flights. And that is a genuine offer because how else are we gonna sell this? You make a video, I make a video, it goes on forever. Both of you at the same time versus me, no rules, bare knuckle. We'll do it in the cage, we'll do it on TV. It'll make a fantastic YouTube video. Otherwise, you're gonna have to accept the fact that your Instagrams prove your lives are shit. Everyone would rather be me than you. And everybody knows one of you can't get laid and last 22 seconds. And other one of you has married a female, which is brutally unattractive. I know how losers think. I know what weaklings do. Of course, they will not accept my challenge to unarmed combat. Instead, they're going to try and report this video and make up some reason saying that I hurt their feelings, blah, blah, blah. So <laughs> then don't. <laughs> Tate, I'm pretty sure you broke TOS multiple times in this video. If you don't want your video removed and to get a strike, don't do that. It was also available on Odyssey, and it will be available on Odyssey until the end of time. Me calling his wife an ogre, because she is. So if you do want to watch this video over and over and over again to laugh and laugh and laugh, there's a link in the description to the Odyssey account, where they will not be able to ban me. His wife will eternally stay an ogre. The challenge will eternally stay open until he gets some balls and comes over here and gets his ass kicked. Enjoy. <laughs> Tate never matured past, like, 10 years old. <laughs> What's up with that? So that's the long Tate speech video for today. <laughs> that was pathetic. Oh yeah, we got to get the, the Hall of Fame stuff. Hold on. What screenshot are we going to use for the Chud Watch Hall of Fame? What do you guys think? The comic? Let me see where that is in the timestamp. Where do they talk about Spider-Man? toy's wife is in charge of him it's all weak little boys so they deny it they're just denying reality they're denying reality they're denying the fact that no man wants to be them they're denying the fact that they're not masculine individuals they're denying everything oh, does anyone know the time stamp of the comic roughly I'm trying to scrub through and find it there's him talking about spider-man where does that come Twenty six oh one. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> sure. <sighs> Hold on. Let me do. Okay, let's add this to the Hall of Fame, shall we? Image, at source, new source, at source. Sorry, this is the most thrilling I know. I right, just gotta add the text and we'll be good.
Let's see. Tate beats up Spider-Man. That's what I'm going to call it, even though the video involves other stuff. <laughs> there we go. Chudwatch Hall of Fame achieved. Congrats, Tate. You're among Caitlin Bennett, MAGA Cope 2020, and now Tate beats up Spider-Man. <laughs> Can we not use this silly font that makes it fake Cyrillic, please? Why? How dare you? Why do you not like my font, goddammit? <laughs> we can figure it out another time if we want to change that so that's Tate good job as always let me do bits messages and then we'll do another video Uh, MMO addicted. I mean, if Romania is anything like Poland, you could speed and bribe cops with much less than what you earn, Hannah. So you can use the same brag. Oh, great. Lily loves stuff with 20 bits. I'll have you know I'm very attractive fat girl. Again, look at my face, peasants. And I would legit laugh in Tate's face if he ever tried to hit on me. Uh, Dejao1, thank you for following. Shai Hakujin, thank you for resubscribing with a two-month streak. Long-time TBR fan, but only recently getting into your streams. Love it so far. Thank you. The Shadow Witch with 50 bits. First of all, Tate, I can see uh, the balding pattern on your head. Protest too much, you do. Second, I had a Cleveland heart panel done, with which, which is 26 pages long. It was pretty good for the record. Had a previous coronary at 31, but I will say my testosterone was within limits, but on the low end, and it only matters if you have symptoms. Double the normal testosterone is bad. You're an idiot, Tate. Shadow Witch with 20 bits. Oh, hell no. Women are inferior. Okay, bitch. I want you to challenge Ronda in a UFC match. Do it. I have money on her. You'll, you little kickboxing bitch. Jesus. Telosa, thank you for following. Lily loves stuff with 20 bits. Could I be Tate just to treat the women that he abuses well and ha how to have the means to take charge of their own online business? That'd be nice. Uh, Steffi Ocelot, thank you for following. Lily loves stuff with 20 bits. Only 10% of men reproduce, kind of like how 10% of people are alphas, 20% are omegas, and the remaining 70% are betas. Looks like Tate's into Omegaverse, too. <laughs> Dad Buell with 20 bits. Tate is a great value. Davis, uh, Ar Aruni? I don't know who that is. But slightly less racist and more misogynistic. Comrade Devin with 20 bits. So where does my value as an NB come from? Tell me, Tate, I'm lost. Neon Wildflower, thank you for following. Uh, Bukit Chabrau with 20 bits. D uh, 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 don't worry about saying name. Polish is kind of weird. Thanks for everything you do, Hannah. I've watched you and Jake for a while now, and it's been a real blast. Oh, thank you. Um, C Beltway 007, thank you for resubscribing with three months in a row. Wing the Ultimate Nug with 20 bits. This is too much inception. You're watching a video of Tate reviewing people who reviewed him, then you saw your own review on Tate. Yeah, it's inception. Wow. The Profane Priestess with 20 bits. As someone with cerebral palsy, go F yourself, Tate. You're a sad, disgusting piece of SHIT. Go F yourself. Um, the Ender 92 with 20 bits, uh, Tate is the peak of the Dunning-Kruger effect graph. He never gained more knowledge, just stopped at max confidence and minimal knowledge. Tatsuyo Dragneel with 20 bits on the topic of comics. I'm so excited. Billy Wiccan is, oh, I, mm, spoilers for WandaVision. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not going to read that for spoiler reasons. Meaty52 with 50 bits. Hot take, you can dominate a woman or vice versa and then turn it off and still love and respect her. Kink. F this guy. Uh, MMO addicted with 20 bits. I bet he paid someone to paint that comic. Um, Frogboy Jones, thank you for following. Andrew Patella with 20 bits. I bet this guy complains about feminists calling masculinity toxic. Uh, WTF4174 with a thousand bits. Thank you. Ghetto Kanye with 20 bits. This guy is yelling all alone in his giant mansion. The echo is symbolic of the emptiness he feels emotionally. <laughs> Uh, Stephen J. Neptune, man with 25 bits. I've never seen a man overcompensate as much as Tate does. Daddy Sume with 20 bits. Holy shit, Hannah, I'm so pissed right now. My warranty ran out two days ago. I was just in the store Saturday and they didn't mention it. Ah, sorry. That sucks. Um, K.R. Goss with 100 bits. When is the next PO unboxing? I get the notification that your Mimsy house was delivered. 
Uh, I'm not sure. It usually takes a while to get enough stuff to justify an unboxing, but I can go pick that up soon. Um, so it's not sitting at the P.O. box. Epiphany Jane, thank you for resubscribing with a six-month streak. Ender92 with 20 bits. Bits for Boss Baby. Sky Comet Fallen, thank you for subscribing. Stone Corbell with 20 bits. This is so weird. Chuds think that opening your mouth is soy face and it shows that you're feminine. I don't understand. All humans open their mouths wide at some point. It's nonsense. They're trying to justify the only thing that matters to them and it's their perceived masculinity. It's very strange. Zero V streaming with 100 bits. There's no doubt in my mind that Tate is an incredibly unhappy person, but he actively re actively refuses to acknowledge that fact. I'd agree. And uh, EC with 20, 250 bits. Thank you. Woo. Okay. Not bad. Not bad with the bits messages. Pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Uh, hold on. Got a text message. Let me take a look. No. <laughs> this is this real, Baha? This can't be real. <laughs> oh no. Um According to this, uh, Donald Trump has opened what they call the office of the former president. I hope this is fake. And it says, statement from the office of the former president. Palm Beach County, Florida. Today, the 45th president of the United States, Donald J. Trump, formally opened the office of the former president. The office will be responsible for managing President Trump's correspondence, public statements, appearances, and official activities to advance the interest of the United States and to carry on the agenda of the Trump administration through advocacy, organizing, and public activism. President Trump will always and forever be a champion for the American people. <laughs> what the fuck? That's pathetic. <sighs> okay, my phone's about to die. I need to plug it in soon. All right, let's do a... It's real. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I missed one of your bit messages. Let me see if I can go find it. Uh, I bet this guy complains about feminists calling masculinity toxic. Oh, probably. Because he doesn't understand what toxic masculinity is and that he basically embodies it. Let's do this one. This is from Sandman. Another MGTOW guy. And this is entitled, President Biden will make everyone a priority. Except white males. So let's see what this is about. Hi everyone, Sane Man here. This video was brought to you by a donation from Joshua. He didn't give me a specific topic. So what I'd like to do is talk about this particular tweet that now President Biden put out where he said this and I quote, Our priority will be black, Latino, Asian and Native American-owned small businesses, women-owned small businesses, and finally having equal access to resources to reopen and rebuild, unquote. A whole bunch of guys on Reddit started freaking out about this, but what's the real likelihood that he's going to try and do helicopter drops of money on failing female businesses? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> this was such a bad choice. And those run by minorities. What about all the commercial real estate out there that's now worthless thanks to the coof? If it was all put mark to market in price, it would bankrupt the banks that hold the loans on such property. I think that most of us are forgetting that it's a politician's job to lie to us with promises that they'll never keep, to make us feel better about ourselves and delude ourselves. After reading this tweet, he probably shouldn't have included that part about helping Asians, because they have Asian privilege. The idea oh, that good old no! Speaking of which, the next chapter in the um, Dave Rubin book Jake and I are reading is entitled Asia Asian Privilege. I'm not kidding. Sleepy Joe is going to stay awake long enough to fix all these problems is an illusion. It's just about virtue signaling and pandering. 
Joe Biden is apparently both capable of, according to these right-wing people who think that the election was stolen, both capable of the greatest election fraud in the history of the world, but he's also too sleepy to do anything. Very consistent. Nothing will change. The males that are currently making up the majority of successful business leaders and entrepreneurs will still make up the majority shareholders and businesses where minorities and women are employed. A good example is Google, where the majority owners of Google are two light-skinned males, and it doesn't matter if they hire an Indian or a woman as a CEO. They're just hiding behind their virtue-signaling CEOs. Again, like, yeah, power structures in the United States are bad. Capitalism has created a system where we basically have private sector monarchs, like the people who run Google or Twitter or Disney or whatever, and that's not good. I agree. Let's, let's have democratic workplaces then. Hooray! Problem solved. So they get to keep their wealth if and when the real shit hits the fan. If as a government you give money to women and minorities to prop up their failing businesses, once the coup is over, the government charity will run out. And the Why do you assume that it's... Okay, you already discussed that businesses are failing because of COVID and the lockdowns that are necessary for the interest of the public health. But you're assuming that the businesses run by women and non-white people are insolvent not because of COVID, but because they're women and non-white people. Yikes. The businesses will still fail. You can't stop this process. Capitalism is all about letting the inefficient companies fail and allowing the new innovative ones that provide value to come in and do their thing. That's not how capitalism has worked in the United States in, like, forever. So that's not how it works. No, large businesses get bailouts. It's not good. It's shitty. It happened now with COVID. Do you know how many, many like interest-free loans and, and handouts have been given to corporations in this past year? The amount of wealth transfer from the bottom to the top has been unprecedented over the course of COVID because the government's been shit and instead of giving money to the citizens so it can actually work its way into the economy naturally, they just gave trillions of dollars to people who are already wealthy and didn't need the money. It's ridiculous. It's all about creative destruction. I'll discuss more in just a moment, but let me first tell everyone about today's sponsor, Ancient Purity. Tom has been going MGTOW for quite some time and doing video requests on my channel. He has also been selling dozens of different products like the ones that you see here. Most vitamins and minerals are poor, ineffective, and unabsorbable garbage. Ancient Purity follows the principle of super clean products that are absorbable and at a dose that works. There the supplements industry is bullshit, by the way. It's total bullshit. Also getting decent reviews on Amazon.com. Also, these aren't the chemicals they put in the water to turn the frogs gay. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay! So visit ancientpurity.com today. Anyways, now back to the Let's take a look at ancientpurity.com. Ancient Purity. Ooh, apothecary jars. 9.99 pounds to 19.99 pounds. Milk thistle powder. How much is this milk thistle powder? Milk thistle is unique in its ability to protect the liver with no medical equivalent. In cases of poisoning with amanita mushrooms, which destroy the liver, it's the only treatment option. It has been so dramatically effective that the treatment has never been disputed, even by the medical community. <laughs> Boy, you know, I was just saying the other day, I, I regularly, every week, I am getting poisoning from Amanita mushrooms, and I'm like, man, I wish I had something for when I regularly get poisoned by these mushrooms I keep eating. <laughs> oh, God. Pine pollen tincture? Pine pollen is the perfect foundation for elite nutrition. This supercharged elixir contains 200 bioactive nutrients, vitamins, and minerals that help unlock peak physical and mental health. Pine pollen has been a staple in Chinese and Korean medicine for more than 2,000 years. Is there a thing on this that says FDA has not evaluated these claims? Yep. Disclaimer. <laughs> The product and the claims made about the specific products. I got to do this quick, like it's in, like an infomercial <clears throat> micro machine guy. Um, 
The products and claims made about the specific products, articles, and claims made in this article, informative, written, or through the site, have not been evaluated by, by ancient purity, the MDAR, the FSA, the United States, the FDI, are not approved by diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. The information provided on the site is for informational purposes and not only is intended to a substitute for advice from your physician or other healthcare professionals or any information contained on or in any product label or packaging. You should not use the information on the site for diagnosis or treatment or any health problems for your prescription or any medication or other treatment. You should consult with a healthcare professional before starting any diet, exercise, or supplement program before taking medication or if you use a you get it. You get it. That's the bit. <laughs> it's bullshit. It's all bullshit. Video. So what's a guy to do when the president says he'll help everyone but him? Well, seeing that many of you out there listening to me identify as black albino masculine presenting transgendered lesbians, you should be fine in this new America. That is, of course, until- Won't anyone think of the straight, white, cis men? They've been downtrodden for too long! Well, you find out that Biden is most likely lying about helping people. There has been talk about the Great Reset, and there's a lot of misinformation about it, so I decided to do some research. Oh god, more conspiracy- Why are all the- Everything I do, from sovereign citizens to politics, chuds, MGTOW, it's all blending together. All of a sudden, all the MGTOW people are into conspiracies. All of a sudden, all the Republicans are into Q. All of a sudden, all the Q people are spouting sovereign citizen nonsense. What is happening? Are we at, like, the singularity of all shitty nonsense viewpoints? where it just all coalesces into a single dense belief system that's destructive? What is happening? Well, apparently it has something to do with transitioning from shareholder capitalism to stakeholder capitalism. Right now we're in shareholder capitalism, where the people that get rewarded the most from company profits are those that own the shares and not the workers. The pendulum has swung so far that the shareholders are getting roughly 99% of that wealth. I doubt that they now- Capitalism. You're describing capitalism. I want to start sharing their wealth with women and minorities at men's expense. <laughs> yes, Jeff Bezos is out here being like, Boy, I, I, I have hundreds of- I guess Elon Musk now is the richest guy in the world. Elon's out here going, Boy, I can't wait to give my billions of dollars to black trans women. What's more likely is that they're recognizing the wealth inequality in society and then want to keep their wealth gains. So if they step aside and let women and minorities take their jobs and make millions of dollars a year as CEOs, while they, the men, stand aside and watch from a distance collecting their billions from the rise in share prices, then they can still be capitalists, but now they've paid their sins by giving up their so-called powerful positions. What the hell? What does any of this have to do with, like, the gender or race of people? What are you talking about? Up to someone else. They're helping the stakeholder. Biden revoked tr Trump's trans military ban. That's good. There's in the company. Giving women and minorities token high-paying jobs while they still collect 95% plus of the value in their company. In the form of share growth. To those looking in from the outside, though, they will look as though they're trying to help the wealth inequality situation. But in reality, they're just cementing that inequality and looking like the good guys. Right, so your beef is with capitalism. Your beef would be with the capitalist system as it exists today, not race politics or identity politics. A stakeholder works for a company or might be the one purchasing the products from that company. You can be a stakeholder and shareholder if you work at a company while also owning shares. That's what the Great Reset and Building Back Better is all about. It's not about changing the monetary system. It's about stakeholder versus shareholder capitalism, where all those diversity hires are going to look as though they're going to get a greater share from corporations at the expense of shareholders and small business owners. While I don't fully agree to this and believe in shareholder capitalism, I also agree that- Oh, he's advocating for shareholder capitalism. <laughs> I'd rather a bunch of useless leeches who sit around and invest all day make most of the profits. Fuck the people who work for the company and actually make it function. Those wage slaves make too much as it is. What a psycho. Capitalism is good to some extent. After all, it was Henry Ford that believed that the way to grow his business was to make sure that his factory workers could also afford the cars that they were making. Paying the workers more so they could bring their standard of living up is a good thing. Does that make Henry Ford a communist or a capitalist? He he's a... He's a capitalist. Henry Ford was a capitalist. He was a capitalist and believed that by creating a new market for every employee and person to own a car, he would end up becoming even greedier. He believed that he could enrich the lives of other people as well as himself at the same time. 
Was he just virtue signaling by trying to pay his employees enough money to buy the cars they built? Probably not. But today's shareholders, do you really believe that they'll pay their workers more money and give them an actual living wage? Probably not, as they already don't pay taxes. They just want to push men out of the high-paid positions and give those to women and minorities. What? Why do you, again, the MGTOW people and the people we talk about when they talk about, like, whenever, and this happened recently with the assistant, like, director of health or whatever, who is a trans woman, too. Everyone I saw who's, like, a chud come across this and talk about it has said they just got the job because they're blank, whether it's trans woman, whether it's, you know, you know, in some other position, a, a black woman or just a woman in general, whatever the person happens to be that isn't, like, a straight cis white dude. Um, and they always assume the person only got the job because they aren't a straight cis man, as if it's impossible for the best candidate for a job to be anyone but a straight white man. They reveal so much when they say this shit, because to them, anyone who is, like, employed and is chosen for a job and they aren't a straight white dude, well, it must be a diversity hire because there's no way someone who's a straight white man couldn't do a better job. It's always so revealing, and it is so frustrating to listen to these idiots talk about this. And simply look like they're virtue signaling to boot. If they really wanted to change things, they would let the system really reset by letting the interest rates rise and ending the stimulus from the Federal Reserve that it creates to keep the stock markets artificially high. Instead, what we're now witnessing is fascism wrapped in the virtue of equality. <laughs> not having a, a not having an entire ruling class of white people is fascism. Don't worry, though. All the other stuff is fine. As long as they're all white, it's not fascism. What? Fascism is the merger of corporate and state power. That's what we're seeing now. The very thing that the left was accusing Trump of being a fascist is what they're implementing right now. No, no, they're not. Right now, a woman will accuse you of cheating on her, but she's the one practicing infidelity behind your back. What? What are you talking about? And if she accuses you of it first, and you catch her cheating, you can't bring it up. Because she accused you first. What are you even talking about? You're single. Sandman is single and has been for years and years. What imaginary situation is he concocting in his head to try and make women look bad? Accuse your political opponents of the very thing that you're guilty of, to first take away their ammunition. It's also ironic that many of the images of males I use in this video, the men have no idea how their standard of life is going to be impacted as their jobs are handed off to other groups. Actually, it was hard to- You are not entitled to every job because you're a white dude. Do you think you own those jobs? Do you think every job belongs to you and that if anyone other than you specifically gets it, then they've taken that away from you? It's not yours. You are not entitled to that. Find pictures of white males standing up against Trump. There were only a few that I could find on the stock page that I looked through. But there's something that the establishment right now isn't thinking about and that's technology. If you listen to Jeff Booth, he's spoken to government central bankers up here in Canada and explained to them that the money printing won't solve the problem. And they told them they know, but they also can't stop printing money. The Silicon Valley company shareholders, the real owners, and not their minority employee stakeholders, believe that somehow they can stop progress and cryptocurrency from destroying their share prices and currency. Cryptocurrency is and continues to be the stupidest thing ever. It's, an, it's, it's the ri most ridiculous speculation bubble ever. I mean, fucking... The, the Holland tulip situation is reasonable by comparison. Cryptocurrency is stupid. <laughs> they built their businesses on technological deflation and believe that new technologies won't show up and make them obsolete as well. We are seeing that with Parler and Gab killing off Twitter. Parler is planning on an IPO in the next two years. It provides probably not anymore. They're not even up right now, are they? I know they're planning on it with the help of some Russian site, but I don't know if they are. Let's look. Parlor. Is Parlor the website spelled with an ER? <sighs> so they're still working on it, but the site's not up. They just have updates. Okay. It's value that Twitter doesn't, which is freedom of speech. <laughs> I want to go online and threaten the public figures for some reason. Why won't Twitter let me do it? Falling precipitously. 
thanks to technological deflation and such costs are increasingly becoming irrelevant. There have been video sharing platforms before that died two or three years ago because of the cost of video hosting. But now we have BitChute, Odyssey, MGTOWN, TV, and Rumble, just to name a few. Yeah, they're probably not going to last for the next five years. I could be wrong. Some of them, I would imagine at least one will probably continue to exist because the user base is ideologically driven politically. They're usually these MGTOW people or like white supremacists or far right, alt right types. There's some crossover between all of those. I'm aware. I'm just trying to cover the bases. So it's possible one or more of those sites might exist, but I don't think their business model is very sustainable. Let me put it that way. YouTube's advantage was that Google was subsidizing its server costs when they were too high. But now that hosting is sustainable and cheap for others, they're about to eat their lunch. People will go to where they are free and treated the best. As a result, big tech will lose their audience and their shareholders will sell their shares and go their own way from them. Also, to all the people that don't believe in global warming, just look at how warm this winter has been. A lot of that has to do with there being a lot less global dimming. You're probably wondering what the hell is global dimming. It has to do with the amount of particulate from pollution that's in the air, and it blocks out the sunlight, hence dimming. Airplanes create artificial clouds known as contrails, and those reflect enough sunlight out of the atmosphere to decrease the temperature by 2 degrees by reflecting the sun away. This was proven during 9-11 for the first time when the planes were grounded, and now we're seeing it with the COOF grounding most planes yet again. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know anything about the claims he's making about this. <laughs> While I don't agree with any sort of new green deal and think it's going too far, we still need to transition to more sustainable energy. It's going too far to put, what, money behind renewable energy that we're going to need both for environmental and practical reasons? What? Even Elon Musk agrees. Fuck Elon Musk. Elon Musk is, Musk is an idiot. <laughs> I don't give a shit what Elon Musk says. Solar power is putting natural gas and coal out of business. In 10 years, fossil fuels will be twice as expensive as renewables. You would be crazy to use coal or gas when solar is half off. Biden is right to push for renewables. In fact, my renewable stock shot up when it became clear he was going to win the election. I don't see the world the way that I want to. I see it the way it is, and I change my investment philosophy appropriately. If you fall in love with only one stock or commodity and refuse to admit that you're wrong on a trade, you will stubbornly wipe your wealth away. Just look at Peter Schiff and Bitcoin. He's a diehard gold bug, and gold might die as a store of value someday. Oh well, there goes the wealth of all those fat Indian aunties. They might be forced to slim down because they can't afford Slim Jims no more. The elites are hoping that creating inflation- What is he talking about? Inflation means that people will have no choice but to spend their money. But most people will buy untaxable assets to store their value because they'll probably be taxed heavily with regards to real estate. The elites can't close the wage gap so they'll print money and hand it out to women and minorities first. The people that receive the money first in the period of inflation or hyperinflation benefit the most. Those that own the corporate stocks will also end up losing. Not as much as everyone else, but they still will lose. Just to conclude this video, even if Biden pushes through the Great Reset, corporations are not going to have... The Great Reset is not real! ...true stakeholder capitalism, the way that Henry Ford had imagined it. Sure, they'll hire more minorities and put women in top management positions but men will still build far more efficient models elsewhere and drive those businesses out of existence because they're inefficient. Even if they hire and help minorities, they still won't pay their fair share of taxes. It's all about appeasing the leftists by making them feel like they've won. Who drew this? Can I just, who drew this? <laughs> That's terrible. But in reality, they'll just raise taxes and bribe them with their own money in the form of universal basic income thus cementing the financial gains that they themselves have made. To all the leftists out there- Why would you be against UBI that would benefit you, who is presumably a straight white man? There that voted for Biden, you've won. And now you'll have to go and to borrow a Bitcoin meme, have fun staying poor. Up to the beginning of the pandemic, Trump was making America prosperous. He didn't understand the nature of exponential- Up until- <laughs> Up until he killed 400, what, what, what's it now? It was 417 last I checked. Up until he killed, ah, oh, 420, blaze it. Up until he killed 420,000 people with his inaction. He was doing great. 
potential functions when it comes to the coup, and it cost him dearly. He handed 25% to, was it the deficit or the national debt? I don't remember. It was a ridiculous amount, though, but he was doing great. As for Biden voters enjoy the money printing and increased poverty that will make you feel even more disenfranchised, meaning you'll vote for Democrat presidents forever. You're too stupid to realize you're voting against your own best interests. Trump put an extra 5000 Says a Trump voter. The irony. It burns. ...dollars in everyone's pocket. And that's why he had to go. He made all the other politicians look bad. The cognitive <laughs> no, he mostly made himself look bad. ...of dissidence from people on the left is incredible. You can't connect wealth with corporate shareholders, only CEOs. But in the end, it doesn't matter if it's on the left or the right because both sides make the money printer go burr. What are you talking about? I hate both wealthy CEOs and corporate shareholders. What? But Biden makes it burr faster. Remember, don't go nuts taking Biden too seriously at his word. He's a politician after all. In reality, Joe will be making wealthy white males like himself and his son a priority behind closed doors. Quite possibly, yeah. He's a politician, but Trump was also doing that, and he was also a fascist on top of it. So, what are you going to do? We'll continue to try and push for progressive Democrats who don't take money from big corporations and don't pull that shit? And we work with what we have right now. That's pragmatism. While pretending that he's making everyone else a priority. Keep printing that money faster and faster, increasing asset price inflation, so my gold, Bitcoin, and stocks keep going up while I do nothing. Take all I cannot wait until Bitcoin, like, just decimates itself. That's going to be the salt on the day. And I know Bitcoin has crashed multiple times and it's recovered. The day that Bitcoin actually really, really collapses is going to be amazing. All the minorities and useful idiots to work for a living and give... Partially because Tate is invested in bitcoin like big time so that'll be fun them token positions of authority in hyperinflated money to spend on twix bars i'm looking forward to it and you are my president even though i'm canadian lol <laughs> anyways that's it for today thanks again joshua for the donation and i hope you enjoyed this topic don't forget to smash the like button the way that lefties are about to get smashed up their financial swing swings and like it bang the bell and check out the mystery link follow me on BitChute, twitter and facebook to get tomorrow's video uh, color by me says I made 2k off Bitcoin, withdrew it all and walked away, felt too much like gambling. Same, I made like 500 something dollars on Bitcoin at one point. And I got, I got out. I was like, nope. <laughs> I got, I, 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 I made my money, I'm out. And even then I never took it seriously. It was a speculation game. It's playing the greater fool, right? I never think Bitcoin is worth anything. However, it's a speculation boom and people buy it. So you make money, but eventually that's unsustainable. That collapses at some point. Video today. Subscribe to me on Minds and Gap to get the video for the day after tomorrow. This channel's been demonetized. And if you want to help me keep making content, then please support me through Subscribestar. There's a link to it in the description. Or you can do an hour-long coaching chat with the Sandman for 45 US dollars. And I won't rush out the door like some cheap whore. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps President Kamala Harris away. So enjoy the rest of your day. And cheers. God, I hate Sandman. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Women react to MGTOW. Yikes. Oh no. This video is not I... I don't want to watch this, but the title is Here Comes the Hornado, and that's that's so ridiculous and self-parody, I almost feel like I have to watch it. Hi everyone, Sane Man here. This video is brought to you by a donation from Anonymous40, and he has a lot to say. Before I get to it, let me first tell everyone about today's sponsor, the MGTOW Book Collection. I don't care about Tim Patton has written five collection. MGTOW books. MGTOW is forever- <laughs> Nothing's more manly than a book cover with a beefcake on it. Where is the And I quote, Dear Sandman, one of the things I miss the most about the now defunct Tom Leica show is that he had a segment called Reports from the Front. This was an hour in which men would call in and tell what their lives were like in different situations. Married, divorce, going through a divorce. I think it would be cool if in your radio show you would ask for reports from the front. I myself am a 40-year-old divorced purple pill man which has a much younger girlfriend, but I have one child in shared custody. I don't mind giving $1,000 a month of support to the child's mother. I can afford it, and this is what I would be doing during the marriage anyways. 
I left my marriage when I felt ignored in so many major decisions, such as selling the house, arranging daycare, and kicking my mother-in-law out of the house. I got to the point where I would actually put my child in daycare, and my wife would cancel the daycare. In the meanwhile, I was the only one working. The hardest part was that I was expected to work while also performing childcare when I got home. I was already so exhausted that I couldn't drive to and from work. I thought that I was going to die in a car accident. But when I would arrange for a babysitter, the wife would unarrange it and say that it was my responsibility. I got sick, my hair was falling out, I was gaining weight, and yelling at my co-workers from all the stress. Why must men suffer so? What has happened? When did child You're care... telling me I have to take care of my child? Bullshit. Financial stability both fall on the man. I was so exhausted that I couldn't do my job properly and had to eventually resign. It was getting dangerous. I eventually decided that I couldn't die. I had to take care of my family. The last straw came when my evil mother-in-law threatened to call the police on me and made up lies about me and my wife wouldn't let me kick her out of the house. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they were lies. Pardon me if I don't believe someone who writes into Sandman's MGTOW channel on a video entitled Here Comes the Hornado. Instead, she said that I had to leave my own house. That was when I knew that I needed a divorce. My own home ceased being mine. I came to several conclusions. It's your family's house. If you have a family and you all live in the house, it's not your house. It's your family's house, of which you are a part. But if you refuse to be a part of that family... One, if you're going to get married, you should have a million dollars already. Literally. For childcare space and a house to live, etc. This will allow you to take a year off of work, which you probably will need. Number two, if you're going to get divorced, you should definitely have 50-50 custody on paper, even if you don't mean it or want it. I'm serious. Give her any money she wants. That is less important. But you also have to make sure that your wife can't legally take your time with your child away. Number three, no woman is going to keep her career after having a kid. At least not for about 10 years. Never expect it. Yes, men are the only breadwinners. But you'll have to do childcare too. Number four, once a child comes, the woman thinks that she can make all the decisions. You have to stand up to this or hopefully find an awalt. They will follow your decisions. You know father knows best. Number five, you don't have to get married at 30. 20-something girls will date you into your late 30s and want to marry you. My main advice is to expect nothing from your wife once she gets her kid. You will do everything. You will be a... Okay, yikes. <laughs> That's enough. I'm tapping out. I'm tapping out of his shit. <laughs> so that Sandman. Ridiculous. Um... Mitchell Drummer with 20 bits. Is this the guy who makes every sentence sound like a question? I hate him. It is that guy. The Shadow Witch with 30 bits. Oh, he wants the impeachment. Uh, all right, Winger's upset by it, but I'm over here thinking he gets convicted. It saves the GOP. He doesn't. He splits it. I really think a conv conviction helps the GOP, especially if what was read is real while still ri ridiculous. Zero V streaming with 50 bits. When will society start to care about white men? Also, wow, this is going real mask out. Off. Profane priestess with 20 bits. The enemy must be both strong and weak, such as the way of fascism. He's both sleepy and all-powerful. 74 Quinn, 74. If you consume a toxic in, uh, Amanita, go to the hospital immediately. You'll be fortunate to live. Lily Love Stuff with 20 bits. It's your fault, Hannah. All your fault. Everything's my fault. Um... Zero V streaming with 50 bits. I'm sure this has been said before, but F me, this guy is such an annoying speech pattern. Uh, KR Goss with 20 bits. I thought he mentioned he lives in Canada during the snowstorm. No power rant. He does. Ghetto Kanye with 50 bits. That's why, that is why is love you, Hannah. Uh, despite the exceedingly high amount of deaths from COVID, you can still make me, make me a sick 420 meme. Stephen J. Neptune Man with 20 bits. Biden will help white men, even though I said in this video, he won't. Um... Really? P... Eh, I'm not gonna read the rest of that. Uh, Stephen J. Neptune Man, but thank you for following. Stephen J. Neptune Man with 20 bits. Uh, so I watched this Twitter Twitch streamer who has said in the past that MGTOW has 
been corrupted by sexist douchebags and that the original idea was that men find their own self-worth and I believe him because he's not a sexist douchebag. He's just a dude who wants to play the SNES and make 1998 jokes about Bill Clinton. It's possible. I don't know. I don't know the origins of MGTOW. It's funny, and I would believe it, because the acronym is supposed to be men going their own way, right? Like, not focusing on relationships, but instead focusing on yourself. And there's nothing wrong with that, regardless of your gender. Um, but the funny thing is MGTOW don't do that. They just spend all their time complaining about women. They don't go their own way. So it's interesting. Anyway, who should I raid? I could raid Squid, but if there's anyone else that you guys know that you would like me to raid, let me know in the chat, and I will take a look. <sighs> Thanks, everyone, by the way, for coming to the stream today. I'll be back tomorrow for Tinfoil Tuesday. That'll be fun. Uh. No Rain, small comrade streamer. Okay, let's check out No Rain. I tend to... Sushi Mom gets to dictate this. <laughs> Sure. Is this the new Hitman game? Alright. Um, yeah. Uh, we're gonna raid. So enjoy the stream. And have a wonderful night, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow for Tinfoil Tuesday. Chat's valid as always. Have a wonderful evening. Oh, no.